Orlando, Florida. It's the center of the dog show universe this weekend. It's the final night of the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Largest show of its kind in the country. And that much anticipated, highly coveted title of best in show. It'll be awarded a little bit later on here tonight. Hi there, Jason Dapp here. Glad to have you with us alongside Gina DiNardo of the American Kennel Club. And Gina, we've got a lot of action to see tonight. But first, the action was still pretty stellar last night as well. We had an awesome first night of the national championship. We had four group winners that are now going to be in Best in Show. We started with the toy group. There we have the Shih Tzu, the number three Shih Tzu, number three toy dog in the country. Rocket was a big crowd favorite. And how about Nathan the Bloodhound? Number one hound dog in the country. He's been winning all over this year, and he's our hound dog representative for Best in Show. This standard poodle, Ricky, opened some eyes last year and doing it again this year. Absolutely. He won the Yukonuba World Challenge last year, and we didn't even know he was coming. He's a surprise entry from overseas, and he scored the non-sporting group. And then finally, the field spaniel, Gideon, winning his group too. Absolutely. This is the top all-time winning field spaniel in history, and he secured the fourth spot in Best in Show. So that first four is pretty good right now, but three more spots left to fill out to fill out that field of seven for best in show. But Gina, this event is about more than that. There's a lot of other great competitions too. There's tons of great celebrations that go on and we're gonna have the best veteran in show competition, the best in miscellaneous. We're gonna have the herding group, the terrier group, and the working group. We're also gonna have best bred by exhibitor, breeder of the year, and last but not least, best in show. So we got a lot to get to, so let's get down to business. But before we start, let's check in with a third member of our broadcast crew, Lindsay McCormick, checking out the other action around here at the Convention Center. Hey guys, I had such a fun time today exploring the grounds of the Convention Center. I went to meet the breeds, I saw agility, obedience, I even got to see some dock diving, which was a blast. And I'll be behind the scenes all night bringing you some cool interviews from your favorite winners. Back to you guys. Lindsay, thank you very much. We are ready to get started here at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. The miscellaneous dogs on deck. And to start off the proceedings, here's the public address announcer, Jeff Michaels. Now it's time for the best miscellaneous in show. Please welcome from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Judge Senor Enrique Filippini. Our stewards for the miscellaneous group are Mr. Peter Farnsworth, AKC Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Mark Dunn, AKC Vice President. May we have the miscellaneous group, please. So the parade here, Gina, is going on. The miscellaneous dogs about to begin the judging process with Enrique Filippini as he overlooks the contenders here. So the miscellaneous class is an interim stage before a breed becomes eligible to compete in the variety groups at AKC shows. So these are breeds that a lot of people watching have never seen. We consider them rare here. They're working towards becoming fully recognized. Certainly a great chance for fans here at attendance in Orlando and those across the globe to see some new breeds in the works. <laughs> Absolutely. We started with 95 dogs in the miscellaneous classes today. Dogo Argentino. The Dogo is a cheerful, humble, and friendly breed. The breed or originated in Cordoba, the central region of Argentina, at the hands of Dr. Antonio Hello. Norris Hello. Martinez. Dr. Martinez worked to develop a dog that would be an athlete and have the character to perform difficult work, get a friendly and amiable personality. 
The mature Dogo needs extensive regular exercise to maintain its athletic condition. In 1973, the breed was accepted by FCI as the first and only Argentinian breed. This is Dogo Argentino, number 39. And with this international-like standing, you get the sense that this dog has had success across the globe, certainly has. Yeah, he's a multiple champion in 12 countries. He's got best in shows in Italy, Russia, Montenegro. Stay here. Please arrive. This is a breed that has lots of heart. He's very brave. He was built to hunt boar. 400 pound boars, <laughs> mind you. Slugi. The Slugi was originally bred by the Berbers of North Africa, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya to hunt games such as hare, fox, jackal, gazelle, and wild pigs. Its exact origins to date too far back to be completely known and remain speculative. In its countries of origin, the Slugi is the only dog treated as family and allowed in the tent. It is also bred and selected with the same care as an Arabian horse. The first Slugi was brought to the United States in 1973. This is Slugi number 667. So Gina, for these miscellaneous dogs, same category, same things the judges are looking for as all the other groups. Yes, so they have an official standard and they are judged against that standard. This is the Slugi that would, so eventually we also designate what group they will be Please. in once they're fully recognized. So the Slugi is a sight hound, so that would go into the hound group. It's a very loyal, intelligent breed. Portuguese Podango. The probable origin of the Portuguese Podango is with the primitive multi-purpose hunting dogs obtained once and distributed by Phoenician traders in early 700 BC. The Podangos were developed into different sizes in Portugal, the largest being the Podango Grande, which was developed for deer and wild boar hunting. It will exhaust and detain large game and await the hunter's gun. The Grande is now very rare in its home country. Developed for rabbit detection, chasing, catching, and retrieval, the knee-high podango Medeo has a hunting style which includes not only full-out chasing, but also cat-like stalking and jumping above dense brush and digging in rocky crevices to find prey. This is Portuguese podango, number 515. All this talk about chasing <laughs> figures his name would be Chase. Yes, so this is a breed that would eventually go into the hound group. Thank you very uh, much. We see the Portuguese Padango Pequeno last night, and uh, this is the larger of the Portuguese Padangos. Berger Picard. The Picardy Shepherd is a medium sized, active, and athletic herding dog. It's solid, hardy, well muscled, and well built without ever being heavy. Its lively and alert expression is characterized by its rugged appearance. The Barget Picard, or Picardy Shepherd, is one of the oldest French herding breeds. The Barget Picard will be eligible to compete in the herding group effective July 1, 2015. This is Barget Picard, number 190. Well, this dog was the only female in the litter, hence the name only. <laughs> Yeah, so next year we'll Please see this dog in the herding group because our board of directors at AKC has approved it for full recognition. Mike Beadle doing the handling. Peruvian Inca Orchid. Agile, Hello, smart, and swift. The Peruvian Inca Orchid is an elegant sighthound that developed in Peru. The breed can be hairless or coated and comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Lively and alert, these dogs can be very good hunters and do well in lure coursing, rally, and agility. In the hairless variety, the skin can be of any color. In the coated variety, all colors are accepted, including black, brown, gray, pink, tan, and white. This is Peruvian Inca Orchid, number 547. Interesting, the different varieties. Certainly, that is a vivacious color for that animal. Yeah, so this is the hairless, the hairless variety of the Peruvian Inca Orchid. They're very intelligent, still very primitive, how they were, you'd find them hundreds of years ago. Thank you. Senor Enrique Filippini, 
giving the once over again. Spanish Water Dog. The Spanish Water Dog, SWD, is a medium-sized curly-coated dog. The SWD is a multi-purpose farm dog whose primary function was herding. Secondarily, it was also used for hunting and as an assistant to fishermen. The SWD has a distinctively single curly coat that may be solid shades of black, brown, beige, or white, as well as party color, with the second color being white. Its coat has a woolly texture that is never brushed or sculpted and may form cords when long. Shaving takes place once a year or more. The Spanish Water Dog will be eligible to compete in the herding group as of January 1, 2015. This is Spanish Water Dog number 699. So you heard it. The Spanish Water Dog going to be moving on up. Owner <laughs> handler Nancy Valley with Rudy here. Yep, so... She says Rudy's favorite things to do are to herd sheep and to do dock diving. Makes sense. It's a water dog. Thank you very much. Please. Nancy got started in 2002 when she imported her first Spanish water dog. Miniature American Shepherd. The Miniature American Shepherd was developed in California during the late 1960s with the breeding of small unregistered dogs that were thought to be Australian Shepherds. These dogs were bred with a goal of maintaining their small size, active character, and intelligence. The breed has been used for herding smaller stocks, such as sheep and goats, although they have the heart to tackle larger stock as well. The Miniature American Shepherd will be eligible to compete in the herding group effective July 1st, 2015. This is Miniature American Shepherd, number 447. Great look from the overhead camera there. Mm -hmm. The handler just making sure that that animal was placed perfectly. Yeah, she's actually a very good handler if you watch Thank her. Thank you very much. Uh, so this, some people would think it looks just a miniature version of the Australian Shepherd that we'll see later in the herding group. Uh, they are very active, very smart. Look at it, two, two, two different color eyes, which is totally okay in this breed. A blue eye and a black eye. Certainly a striking creature with that makeup. Thank you very much. Has a lovely coat pattern. We call that like a merle pattern when it's different splashes of different colors. Cherneco del Etna. The Cherneco Delita is a small, medium-sized dog with an elegant and slender, yet robust build. The breed is a keen hunter that works by scent, sight, and hearing, and can handle working over difficult yeah, terrain. Good. The affix Deletna was only added to the name Cherneco in 1939, when the first breed standard was accepted by the Italian Kennel Club. Etna comes from Mount Etna, the largest active volcano in Europe, situated on the east coast of Sicily. The breed will be eligible to compete in the Hound Group, effective January 1, 2015. This is Charnecco Deletna, number 219. Certainly an Italian flavor. <laughs> Tazio is the dog's name. This is a very sweet, gentle hound. Please around. being shown by his owner, Lucia, who is actually the president of the parent club, the national breed club for this breed. Hello. Pumi. The Pumi is a medium-sized, agile Hungarian herding breed. They are versatile stock dogs, equally adapt at gathering, driving, and keeping the stock under control. The breed has a long head with semi-erect ears, a whimsical expression, and a tail that forms a circle over the back. The coat, black, white, gray, or shades of fawn from pale cream to red, is a combination of wavy and curly hair, forming corkscrews or curls all over the body, and is never smooth or corded. The Pumi was identified as an independent breed in 1920. This is Pumi number 582. Anka, certainly living up to that curly Q status. She is a true working dog. She herd sheep on the farm. She actually does agility as well. It's a very cute breed. I love those ears when they prick up like that. Look how sweet that is. It's a trademark of the breed. Please around. Go 
Grand Basse Griffon Vandion. The Grand Basse Griffon Vandion is a French scent hound that hunts in packs. Grand is the larger of the two Basse breeds. Griffon describes the type of wire coat. Vandion is the state in France where the breed developed. The breed entered the AKC's Foundation Stock Service in 2004. This is Grand Basse Griffon Vandion, number 275. So we saw a PBGV last night, and That's now right. we have the GBGV. GBGV. So yes, they're just a larger version of the PBGV. They have similar temperaments and personalities. Fun-loving, active, very active. They can be kind of docile and sweet. <coughs> Lots of energy. Please around. <coughs> and this is Du, and he came from the Netherlands, actually. Hello. American Hairless Terrier. The breeding of the American Hairless Terrier began in earnest in the early 1970s when a hairless puppy was born into a litter of mid-sized rat terriers. The American Harris Hairless oh. Terrier is well known for its propensity for fewer allergic reactions than other breeds, allowing them into the homes once denied. This, combined with their intelligence and ease of care, make them perfect companions while maintaining the drive to excel in performance events. This is American Hairless Ta Terrier number five. This is Corey. This is the final animal in this miscellaneous dogs class, and his favorite treat is C-H-I-C-K-E-N. <laughs> We're told not to say the actual <laughs> word chicken. He's being handled by his owner, Tammy Stephanie, and she says, after 25 years of grooming collies, an American hairless is a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> wash and wear dogs. There's something to be said about wash and wear dogs. Big chicken eater. He's Corey. <laughs> So that's the group here in the miscellaneous section, and Senor Enrique Filippini of Argentina. Please, can you move around one by one, please? Once a little more time to decide here. So there's the Dogo. The Slugi. Portuguese Padango. There's the Berger Picard. Peruvian Inca Orchid. Next we have the Spanish Water Dog. Miniature American Shepherd. The Chirneco del Etna. Here we have the Pumi, the GVGV, and the American Hairless Terrier. Please. And Senor Filippini is ready to make his decisions. So we're going to have our stewards for this evening bring the ribbon and trophy out. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on all of you for this wonderful group. Big round of applause, well deserved. And the winner for tonight is the miniature American Shepherd. Please move around. Well. Two eyes of a different color. <laughs> One champion here in the miscellaneous dog category. Senor Filippini has chosen the miniature American Shepherd as the best miscellaneous dog in show. So the first winner of the evening here in the miscellaneous dog category it takes the top prize in this class, and it is the miniature American Shepherd with the win here to start off our night in Orlando.
We are just getting started here in Florida on the evening. The miniature American Shepherd headed to the victory circle as the first winner of this Sunday night. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My buddy Tommy is an artist, and I'm his assistant, Hailey. Actually, I've been helping Tommy with a lot of things since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence. I help him get around, reach things he can't get to, keep him smiling, sometimes I'm even his paintbrush. To find out how you can help bring people like Tommy together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. <coughs> Well, the action is underway here in the final night of the 2014 American Kennel Club Yukonuba National Championship. We've got three more spots to fill for the best in show. That's coming up later. The herding group is on deck, but first, Lindsay is standing by with the winner in the miscellaneous dog category. Lindsay? Hey, guys. I'm here with the owner as well as the handler. And Leo, congratulations to you all. You. Explain to me the history of this breed. The breed originated in the United States. Um, they are from Australian Shepherds, and they're just a smaller version. They're a herding breed, and we will be going into the herding group July of 2015. How close do you think the AKC is to recognizing this breed? We are very close. We will be in the herding group in July of 2015. And when the judge had you guys go around once more, what was going through your mind? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked. <laughs> Congratulations. And we look forward to seeing a long career from Leo. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, Jason. Lindsay, thanks. So a winner already. Herding group is on the way next. And that little taste of victory, after all that hard work and practice, well worth it here at the national championship. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp, so they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf, so I'm not just her buddy, I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK.
This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 25% off fall and winter apparel. Plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. Well, our journey to figure out who will be best in show, it continues coming up. The Herding Group on the way. But first, there are plenty of other competitions taking place here throughout this national championship in Orlando, including one for some of the fittest and fastest dogs. Let's check out the agility competition. agility competition with director of agility Carrie D. Young. Carrie, what is this? This is an obstacle course for dogs and their handlers. The dogs and handlers run together and they follow the course the judges designed and they have to run it together in a certain amount of time. It's a timed competition but they also have to be accurate. What do you tend to find is the most difficult obstacle in this course? Um, probably the most unique obstacle are the weave poles. We've got a set of 12 poles out there that the dog has to slalom through. So there's really nothing like that they'd ever do in their normal doggy day that even equates to that. This is a celebration of all AKC breeds. We've invited the top five dogs from each breed here. And believe me, the competition on all sizes can be pretty tough. Are mixed breeds invited to this competition? Absolutely. We have the top five mixed breeds in the country have been invited also. So they compete head-to-head -head with the purebred dogs. Well, I'm excited to check this out. Great to see some of those dogs expending some of that energy and vying for titles there in the agility competition. Our thanks to Lindsay for tracking that down. Jason Knapp here with Gina DiNardo. And Andrew Brace has graced us with his presence again tonight as we get ready to look at this next group, the herding group coming up. Andrew, how about some early thoughts here overall on what to expect from the herding group? Herding group is always an exciting group. Um, great dogs with a lot of agility, a lot of mental capacity, wonderful moving dogs. I've just had a quick look in the collecting ring. There are a few hot tips out there knocking around, I think. So <laughs> I think a few people are going to be on the edge of their seats tonight with this well, one. Well, certainly we are looking forward to this group as a whole and Gina some of the particulars here for the history of the herding group. Well they were bred to move other animals such as sheep and cattle mostly drive livestock from one place to another and they have great instincts that be careful they may gently herd your own children. Well why don't we herd everybody that way to the herding group Jeff Michaels the public address announcer standing by to bring them out. Now it's time for the herding group. Please welcome from Brimfield, Massachusetts, Judge Mrs. Roberta C. Davies. Our steward for the herding group is AKC board member, Dr. Carmen L. Battaglia. May we have the herding group, please. So we have Roberta Davies. She grew up in New York City. She began her judging career in 1970. Her first breed was the Siberian Husky, but she's also owned and showed Belgian Sheepdogs and Bearded Collies. Interesting, I noticed we've got three varieties of Belgian Shepherd recognized in the States. And then right. the fourth variety, the Lacanois, the Lacanois, is still in your miscellaneous. Yes, I, I know they're still, working yeah. very hard to get into the herding group. And not that a cute coat on the Lacanois? I love the Lacanois. But we have three Belgian breeds in this herding group this evening. So in the neighborhood of 30 dogs in this category as well, as they all make their way here into this largest of the venues at the Orange County Convention Center. How will they handle the spotlight of the big stage here for the herding group? Try to earn a spot in the Best in Show competition a little bit later on tonight. Roberta Davies is ready to begin. German Shepherd Dog. The modern German Shepherd Dog was not recognized until the late 19th century 
although their working ancestry dates a great deal further back. The breed has a faithful following throughout the world. They are versatile and enthusiastic workers and are used in police work, search and rescue, and as assistance dogs. This is German Shepherd Dog number 24. German Shepherd gets us going. This is Daisy. She actually finished a title, I think, today, Gina, didn't she? Oh, yes, she became a champion it's today. A ni it's a nice place to finish. <laughs> it's a very nice place yeah, to This is a breed a where, you know, movement's very important. And when you go to the German Shepherd Dog, the specialty shows, these guys, they, they expect their dogs to move and move and move. And the breed was judged by Jimmy Moses today. Considered one of the great experts in the He's breed. He's done a lot of winning with German Shepherds yes, over many very years. very famous German Shepherds through the years. Lenny Brown, the handler tonight. Bearded Collie. One of Britain's oldest breeds, the Bearded Collie probably shares some ancestors with the shaggy breeds of Central Europe. Because they were the dogs of the common shepherds of South Scotland rather than of nobility, records of the breed are scarce prior to the 18th century. They are excellent shepherds and drovers. This is Bearded Collie, number 41. This is Zach, and when he's not doing some victorious winning in dog shows. He likes chasing squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good combo. Yep. Well, this breed is very exuberant, bundle of energy, bundle of joy. They do something called what the, the beardy jump, the beardy leap. They're always bouncing. And, and they have the most incredible expression. They're sort of fun, but very wise with it. Mm -hmm. And when you get a bearded collie with the correct breed specific gait, that holds its top line, that holds its tail correctly, and really covers the ground effortlessly with a relatively low head carriage. They're, they're quite spectacular, and they just appear to be effortless as they go around the ring. Australian Shepherd. Despite their name, Australian Shepherds were developed almost exclusively in the United States in the 1800s. While their origins are not certain, their ancestors may have been developed by Basque Shepherds who settled in Australia before coming to the United States during the gold rush of 1849. These versatile dogs are used not only on the ranch, but also as drug detectors, search and rescue dogs, and guide dogs. This is Australian Shepherd number 87. This is Quiz, Emily Burden, leading Quiz around on his journey here in the herding group. They say here that he enjoys going in junior handling, so there must be a young junior handler who takes him in the ring, and that he snuggles in bed with his family at night, like all good dogs should. Now, a few minutes ago, we saw this new miniature American Shepherd. Yes. Thing. Now, is this a smaller version of the Australian yes, Shepherd been that's been developed from, in the States? Absolutely, bred down from the Australian Shepherd. How cute is that? Belgian Treveran. There are three Belgian Shepherd Dogs in this group. All three were recognized in 1891 as a result of the efforts of the newly formed Belgian Shepherd Club. The Belgian Treveran is distinguished by being long-haired and not black. <laughs> Typically, they are fond to mahogany with black overlay. This is Belgian Treveran number five. Roberta Davies <laughs> giving this dog Razzle a good thorough look over. It's interesting with the Belgians, Gina, you know, a lot of the, the, the breeds in this group, we expect them to have very open side gates, mm -hmm. but with the Belgian Shepherds, it's, it's rather a more restricted gait. They move briskly without that excessive you. reach and drive exactly that you'd be expecting right. in a lot of the other breeds. This is a very good so example. So they're not quite as generic. Yep. Belgian Sheepdog. The Belgian Sheepdog is the long-haired black one of the three Belgian Shepherd dogs. All of the three Belgian Shepherds probably developed from the same European herding stock as did other similar breeds throughout the surrounding countries. This is Belgian Sheepdog number 21. This is Breck, and Breck was the number one Belgian Sheepdog a couple of years ago. Retired, out of retirement to show them all how it's done. That's right, he's a veteran now, seven and a half years of age. He's owned by Kelly and Alexis Hopkins. This is their very first show dog, so I also like to congratulate successful newcomers in the sport. And I think it's great to see veterans coming out and do well, Gina, because I think, you know, all too often some of these show dogs, they get retired, you know, to sort of live at home as, as companions, 
probably when they've still got a few years of looking at their pets. They love coming to the dog shows. They certainly do. Breck also a therapy dog helps students get over their fear of public speaking. Well done, Breck. <laughs> That's awesome. Maybe they should come up here and give Belgian us a few Malinois. <laughs> the Belgian Malinois is the short-coated dog with a black Show mask me. and black ears. These three Belgian breeds all excel in herding and obedience work. They're also used as police dogs and drug and bomb detection dogs. This is Belgian Malinois number 26. Down and back. This is Poppy. So the Malinois in general are more reserved to strangers, I think, than some of the other herding breeds. Mm, yep, yep. They're not as exuberant as some yeah. of the herding breeds, certainly. They're very smart. They're Thank very you high energy. And you know, they're a breed that, you know, in the past haven't been taken that seriously. But I mean, recently, certainly back in the UK, we've seen Malinois actually placing in groups recently. Bouvier de Flandre. In the 19th century in southwest Flanders and the French Northern Plain, the farmers, butchers, and cattle merchants used large, rough-coated dogs for driving cattle. An amalgamation of these dogs eventually became the Bouvier de Flandre of today. These dogs are powerful and rugged, but agile. They are frequently used as guardians. This is Bouvier de Flandre, number 11. Uh, the Bouviers winning in the breeder stakes last night, Elaine Paquette was leading that contingent, and she's handling this dog tonight. This is the number one Bouvier in the country. He won his national specialty, also the winner of the Bouvier Club's Thank top 20. Elaine's having a good weekend. Yes, she's a that great breeder. That was a great breeder. one under Pat, yeah. Pat Craig Trotter last night. And you know, there have been Keisha's dogs that she's actually sent to the UK. Not only have they won well in the ring, but also become great producing dogs and help the breed no end back home. Show me the bite. Briard. French tapestries of the 8th century depict the Briard. This ancient breed of France was used to defend flocks from wolves and poachers, and in later years to herd the flock and guard property. During war times, they have served as sentries, carried supplies, and located wounded soldiers. They are versatile and quick learners. This is Briard number 26. <clears throat> Sparkles. We're told like sitting on the sofa eating some bonbons. <laughs> Maybe some of those come if there's a big time ribbon later on. Well, probably after he's gone for a very long run because this is a very spirited, energetic breed. They were guardian breeds, so they're very fearless. Thank you very much. Normal area. Breeders are very lively dogs, yeah. and you know they have some little quirks. You know, all these breeds have these interesting characteristics. In the Briard, double double dew claws at the back, that little crochet hook. Beauceron. The Beauceron is an old and distinct French breed of herding dog. Developed solely in France, Beaucerons were used to herds were used to move herds of 200 to 300 sheep, traveling up to 50 miles per day without showing signs of exhaustion. He is an intelligent dog with spirit and initiative, wise and fearless, with no trace of timid, tim timidity. Beauceron number seven. So this is a French breed. It should be very friendly and outgoing. But all of these d dogs that were used to herd and guard are also have a, a confidence about them, sometimes an aloofness about them. Temperament is terribly important in, in these breeds. This is a breed that's only recently come into the UK. And it's it's slowly way. getting a, a, a calling. They were used to move really large herds, like 200, 300 dogs. They're uh, powerful dogs. Sheep or cattle. I saw this dog in the breed the other day. He has the deepest bark. Smooth Collie. Smooth Collies were first recorded as being much larger than the Rough Collie. However, as the popularity of the breed grew, the two varieties converged and are now judged by the same standard. With the exception of coat description, what's that? Down and back. This is the Rough Collie. The Rough Collie. <laughs> Yay, there we go. <laughs> he started. The, the early herding Collies dogs of next. Scotland and England were the predecessors of the Collie. It was only in the early 19th century that notice was taken of this breed and their type became consistent. You, Collies are recognized know? today in two varieties, the Rough Collie, as seen here, and the Smooth Collie. This is Rough Collie number 30. <laughs> 
Smooth Collie. Smooth Collies were first recorded as being much larger than the Rough Collie. However, as the popularity of the breed grew, the two varieties converged and are now judged by the same standard. With the exception of coat description, popularized by fiction movies and television, the Collie is best known, is the best known of the herding breeds. This is Smooth Collie, number seven. This is Driver, the second of the three Collies here in a row that we'll see. The smooth collie, you can really see the features of the head that you sometimes can't see as well in the rough collie. Mm, absolutely. Slightly different ear set. And, and the planes often. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, Interesting to see that the rough is actually a blue merle, not the sable that everyone thinks mm -hmm. of as lassie. It's a very sweet, loving breed. Border collie. There have been sheepdogs of various sports of sorts in the British Isles so since right. the time of the Romans. Most of these breeds were covered by the Scottish dialect word collie. The border collie gets its name Thank from you. the border region between England and Scotland. They are known for their herding abilities as well as their obedience and trainability. This is border collie number 20. Down and back, please. Amanda Giles, co-owner and the handler here of Empress. Well, actually, I think they must have changed it up because this is Debbie. Amanda's mom, and Debbie grew up in the sport. She's been showing for 45 years. Thank sporting you. Fields. Sporting Fields. Famous was in Whippet, surely. Yes, was Debbie's parents' kennel name. Uh -huh. Very famous for Whippets. And who did we see with a Whippet yesterday? Her daughter, Amanda. So it's a three-generation yes. success story. Marvelous. Canaan Dog. Canaan Dogs, the dogs of the Israelites, probably existed as early as 2200 B.C., as the Romans dispersed the people of the region, the dogs became undomesticated and moved into the desert, where they survived until the 20th century. As Israelis prepared to fight for independence, the breed was put to work guarding and detecting mines. This is Canaan Dog number five. This is Cayman. Number one owner handled Canaan Dog. Number two all breed Canaan Dog. This is one of those very primitive breeds with, with very, very definite character, very definite instincts, rather independent, and possibly not the ideal town dog. I would agree with that. Old English Sheepdog. The origins of the Old English Sheepdog are open to debate, but the breed clearly comes from the early herding dogs of Western England. The breed can be traced to the early 19th century when it was used as a drover and was known as a bobtail. This is an active breed whose hard outer coat and soft undercoat provide an unmistakable look. This is Old English Sheepdog number 21. Well, if your name is Swagger and you're the top winning Old English Sheepdog in history, you're allowed to have a little swag. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is the number two dog all breeds in the United States. Last year, he was our winner of the Best Bread, Bread by Exhibitor and Show competition. And interestingly, today, the breed was judged by Barbara Muller, who's a very successful bobtail breeder from Switzerland, whose sister also shows Old English in the UK. And it's interesting that Barbara had such a high opinion of this dog. And Swagger is in the over 100 clubs because he has 112 best in shows lifetime. And interesting to see Colt moving him at the right pace and not flying around the ring. Australian Cattle Dog. The Australian Cattle Dog came about in Australia in the 1800s to satisfy the need for a hard-working, quiet cattle drover that could withstand the heat. They are a cross of smooth Highland Collies from Scotland, the native Dingo, Dalmatians, and Kelpies. The result was a hard worker with a protective nature that was also loyal companions for his master. This is Australian Cattle Dog number nine. Talking about growing this sport, Ronnie Fields, one of the co-owners and handlers, got involved in the sport last year when he received this dog, Clody. Hugely popular in native Australia. When you drive around, you'll see lots of these Australian cattle dogs sat in the back of utility trucks and very popular companion breed. Finnish Laphund. Finnish Lapoon were bred to herd Hello, reindeer and as helpers to the Sami, a tribe in the northern regions of Finland, Sweden, and northern Russia known as Lapland. These double-coated dogs are intelligent, eager to learn, and calm and friendly, very friendly with people. They make loving and devoted family pets that do well with children and other dogs. 
This is Finnish Lapun, number seven. And this is Lumi. This is the number one Lapun all breed. Now, didn't we see Diego Garcia in a group last night with another black and tan dog? Thank you. A Tibetan Baldwin. Spaniel. Tibetan Spaniel, perhaps. He's having a black and tan weekend. And they're I owned think. by the same person, Martha really? Feltenstein. Yes. Another of the relatively new breeds to the U.S. Polish Lowland Sheepdog. There is evidence of the Hello. Polish Lowland Sheepdog in Poland in the 16th century. They probably came about as a cross between a puli and another herding breed. They were used by peasants as guardians of flock and home. The Polish Lowland Sheepdog may also have played some role in the ancestry of the bearded collie. This is Polish Lowland Sheepdog number six. So we call this breed for short sometimes the pawn. The pawn. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is a very active breed. They said that they have a nice double coat. They can be funny. You know why they're called pawns? No, tell me. Polski Ocharek Nitsini. Oh, I'm so impressed because I could never say that. <laughs> 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 well, that's Polish for Polish Lowland Sheepdog. And this is Penelope Pond. Norwegian Buhund. Once the cherished companion of Vikings, the Norwegian <laughs> Buhund is a versatile farm dog from Norway that herds livestock, guards property, and has been used for hunting game. The name means farm dog, bu in Norwegian means homestead or farm, and hund means dog. This working breed has a lot of energy, strength, and stamina, but is also known to be independent. This is Norwegian Buhu number 10. <laughs> Bina, Annie McLaughlin handling. This is the only Buhu to have won an AKC Best in Show. She's won two of them. It's a typical Scandinavian spitz breed. Very functional. They can be very vocal. Still work very much at home. Icelandic Sheepdog. Playful and inquisitive, the Icelandic Sheepdog is a hardy and agile dog. With prick ears and a curled tail, slightly under medium size, the breed has two coat types, long and short. Iceland's only native dog is adapted to local terrain and farming techniques, making this working dog indispensable to its people. This is Icelandic Sheepdog number 15. Beautiful. You Icelandic like this one, Sheepdog, huh? yeah. This is Levi. This is Iceland's only breed, and it's actually thought to be one of the oldest breeds in the world. Mm, it is, and when you go to Iceland, you will see that they have probably one of the largest okay. entries in their shows. They're, they're very, very, very numerous, there. very popular. Not so much here, though. But uh, they've only been fully recognized, I think, what, about two or three years, Two or three Gina? years, yep. Mm. Shetland Sheepdog. Developed in the Shetland Islands, northeast of Scotland, the Shetland Sheepdog comes from the oh, same herding stock as the Collie. The diminutive size of this breed belies its hardiness, because the breed originated in such an isolated area, it was slow to be recognized. However, once known, Shelby's quickly became very successful in the show and obedience ring. This is Shetland Sheepdog number 19. Down and back. Roberta Davies. <laughs> Gonna have a tough time. There are a lot of quality dogs in this herding group. Interestingly though, Jason, seeing the shelter here, Blue Merle, as is the Rough Collie, whereas the Sable color is obviously the, by far the most popular. But tonight we've got a Blue Merle Shelty and a Blue Merle Rough Collie. Hello, show me the bite, please. Puli. The Puli is a Hungarian breed that probably resulted over 1,000 years ago from the interbreeding of herding breeds of Central Europe with sheepdogs of invading tribes from Asia. They were kept with the herd and were easily to distinguish from the sheep because of their dark color. The Puli's goat can be kept brushed or allowed to cord. This is Puli number five. Gina, you were talking about that 100 club before. We've got another member, I believe, here in Ziggy. Ziggy's won 102 group firsts. When we say the 100 club, we mean best in shows. But 102 group ones is no That's slouch. That's not to be sneezed <laughs> at. And this is a veteran dog, so he won the veteran herding group today. So we'll see him in Thank best you. veteran later. 
but this is a breed that gets better with maturity. We've seen lots of poolies winning groups around the world when they get to 10, 11. And today, I think this one won, actually won the veteran herding group. Pyrenean Shepherd. Hello. The Pyrenean Hello, Shepherd is the traditional working companion of the larger dog, the Great Pyrenees. Together, they aid the shepherd in his everyday workings with a herd or sheep or other livestock. Outside his homeland of France, the breed is rare. But in France, his popularity as a wonderfully devoted family companion has grown considerably oh, since the 1970s. Although small in stature and weight, it is said pound for pound, he has few equals in both herding or guarding. This is Pyrenean Shepherd, number 14. And this is Mink, most winning female in the history of this breed in the United States. I love that this breed was bred to work side by side with the Great Pyrenees. Mm, so the mm. Great Pyrenees would protect and the flock, the but the, this little guy would alert and be vocal if there was a problem. Yeah, they complemented each other yeah. perfectly with cool. jobs that they do. And they can sometimes have a very interesting coat pattern with part of the coat sort of much smoother than the, the other half. Show me the bite. Enli Booker, Mountain Dog. The Enli Booker Mountain Dog was bred to move cows from pasture to pasture in the Swiss Alps. The medium sized breed is prized for its agreeable nature, trainability, and devotion. Enlis are an active, high energy breed requiring Down above back, average exercise, <coughs> so are best suited to active families as opposed to the casual dog owner. This is Enli Booker Mountain Dog number seven. This is Larry. This is the smallest of the Swiss breeds. Has that typical tricolor pattern and is used to drive much. cattle, I believe. Yeah, they're and again, very functional at a specific job. And as, you, as you've mentioned, ty that typical three color code pattern that gives them an instant smartness <laughs> and appeal with the Bernese and the Great Swiss. And bringing the table out for the smaller breeds. Swedish Valhund. The Swedish Valhund, SV, is a very old spitz type breed known since the time of the Vikings. For centuries, the SV has been kept as a farm dog and used for herding cattle. Hello. The SV Hello. is small, powerful, and sturdily built. The double coat and the characteristic harness markings are essential features of this breed. This is Swedish Valhund number 15. And back. It's, they claim that, that there are common ancestors with the corgi breeds in the Swedish Valhund, which, which you can also obviously understand, um, but also some, some common ancestry with the Norwegian elk hound. Oh. And again, if you look at the dog, um, there, is, you can see there that are similarities. There. With the, um, and a, the at home, or at least in its, in its native land, the breed is known as the Vestkortespitz. But we, we still call them Swedish Valhunds in the UK. <laughs> Pembroke Welsh Corgi. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi probably arrived in Wales along Shall with Flemish immigrants in the 12th Shall century. Yes, Their ancestry is closely related to the Spitz breeds of Northern Europe. Interbreeding with cardigan corgis did occur, but the two are separate breeds and haven't been interbred since the middle of the 19th century. This is Pembroke Relsh Corky number... It's a little slippery, huh? Mm. 30. 30. <laughs> well, Etta, her mother won the herding group here at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship a handful of years ago. Maybe it'll be like mother, like daughter. She's being shown Thank by you. her breeder, one of her breeders, Bill, Bill Shelton. Shelton. He's been tremendously successful with this breed, yes, Gina, hasn't he? Yes. Yeah. And being a Welshman, <laughs> I must say, I'm delighted to see such a, be a beautiful Pembroke in the, in the ring there. And Edda actually won uh, the herding group bred by competition, so we're going to see ah, her later we'll see, in we'll Best we'll Bread see, by. We'll see her later. This actually is a breed where the quality in the USA, I personally think, is higher than anywhere in the world. Yeah, they're beautiful here. Lots you and have lots so of many wonderful Pembrokes now. Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The Cardigan Welsh Corgi is the older of the Corgi breeds. The breed has been known in the high country of Wales since 1200 Show BC. Me the bite, During later centuries, when open common fields were shared by tenant farmers for grazing land, 
Cardigans earn their keep by driving the cattle out to cover as much of the grazing land as possible. This is Cardigan Welsh Corgi, number eight. Down and back. And this is Coco, also with a wonderful resume. 17 best in shows, the first cardigan to win the herding group at Westminster this February, ranked the number three herding dog. And what I love about this breed is the structure. The front is designed so that they could drop really quickly to avoid being kicked by a cow when they're nipping at their heels. And, the, and they will nip. You know, when you actually see them with, with cattle, they are very, very agile. Um, although to the layman, they might look just like a, a Pembroke with tail. Definitely different not. head, different feet. Decision time. Jason, what do you fancy? Ooh, there's a lot to <laughs> fancy. And a lot for Roberta Davies, the judge here from Massachusetts, to take a peek at. But do you have a favorite? You know, the I'm Pembroke the there spot. late, <laughs> the Pembroke late was very nice. Uh, you can support the Welsh, Jason. <laughs> I don't think that old English is going to be far away, Gina. What do you reckon? Well, it's one of the top dogs in the country right now, so but definitely going but to have... He is so on form too, isn't he? He's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, I saw him earlier getting pictures done, and I mean, the, the work that goes into presenting that coat is... Incredible. German Shepherd, bearded Polly. Very impressive beardy. Malinois. Good moving German Bouvier. Shepherd. The Malinois. And out comes the Malinois, the Bouvier, making uh, Rough Collie. Elaine Paquette's border weekend collie. even more memorable. Old English. Rough Collie, Border Collie, In Old comes. English, their swagger. Mm -hmm. The Border Collie, the the very up. young Border Collie. Corinian Shepherd. So the, the Shelty. Yep. And the Corgi. There you are, Jason. You picked the Pembroke. <laughs> Everybody go back. Just making a little room so that they can run around. That's quite a big cut, isn't it, Jane? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's She's take them one impressed. at a time around. Yeah, ten. Ten good dogs out there now. Is she going to take them around individually or collectively, do you think? One at a time. Right? One at a time. Here we go. And then, of course, the crowd can support their favorites. Not that that's going to influence Ooh, the judge. We love that. You should be clapping at home, too. <laughs> so I, like, I like the way you Americans applaud <laughs> everything. I, I wish we did more of it at home, to be honest. It's a show. Come on. And you know the dogs respond to it. Some of these dogs just love the applause. There's the Bouvier. That's a powerful moving dog. Again, moving at the right pace. Very important in that breed. Yeah. The rough collie. Mm -hmm. This is the young border collie. The sporting fields border collie mm -hmm. from that famous three generation family. Swagger the old English has his fans in the audience. Mm -hmm. Certainly yeah. does. And I love the way Colton moves. Characteristic the rolling gait you yeah. can see. Right Not flying top. around yeah. the ring. The shelty, there's another mover. Wonderful profile. This brisk moving little Pyrenean sheep dog, a breed that we don't always see at the top of groups, but this one has done particularly well at that level. Bill Shelton with his latest Pembroke. Just an excellent group of dogs out there. Very, very strong. Yeah, yeah. It's no hardship to find four there. No. And are we We're selecting select in reverse four, order? Three, two, one, yeah. yeah. A little bit of a countdown scoring flavor. I like that. Now Judge Davies will announce fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. Border Collie. So that young border goes in fourth. That's quite an achievement at the AKC Yukonuba National Congratulations to all of you, by the way. Um, you're all wonderful examples of your breed. You deserve to win the breed today, and you deserve to be in this group. I ha I'm so pleased to have the honor of judging all of your dogs. In third place is the Corgi. The Pembroke Shelton is in third. The, Pembroke yep. Welsh the Coventry Corgi. Welsh Corgi, Corgi bitch. National specialty winner, number one Pembroke. Second place goes to the Bouvier. 
Bourbier second. Very nice. It's Old English, you think, dog. Gina? Yeah. Is it a swagger kind of a day? It's possible. It's possible. Drum roll, please. And first place in the herding group tonight goes to the Old English. There we go. Uh, <laughs> well, keeps on winning. He was a, he was a hot <laughs> tip, but it was justly deserved. I'm Absolutely. sure, I'm, and I'm sure Barbara Miller, the breed judge, is uh, highly excited by Miller. that win. So congratulations so to Swagger. We have another great contender oh, coming in the big yes. ring for best. Uh, Swagger is the latest. Mrs. Davies has chosen group first, the Old English Sheepdog. Second, the Bouvier. Third, the Corgi. Fourth, the Border Collie. Well, Swagger's got a little bit more in that step right now. Led by his handler, Colton Johnson. He is off to get ready for best in show as the winner of the herding group tonight here. 2014 AKC Yukaduba National Championship. Unlike most superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Riding the trails of the Alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my friend, Cole. And that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Now uh, the Old English Sheepdog winning the herding group. Swagger is standing by with a young lady that's got a little swagger of her own. Lindsay McCormick with him backstage. Lindsay? Thank you, Jason. I'm standing by with Colton and Swagger. And something you guys might not know is this is, he's the breeder, the owner, and the handler. You must be incredibly proud this evening. I am. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing, and I'm honored. He seems to have a distinctive gait. Can you describe this and explain this for us? Why is that? Sure, an Old English Sheepdog should amble, which means that they should roll over the loin. Um, it's the way the whole Old English Sheepdog is built. It's all about shapes. And the number one herding dog, what can we expect to see you guys, from you guys in the future? Um, well, we've had a wonderful, wonderful time. We're kind of wrapping up everything with him, so we're gonna just enjoy our dog. Well, congrats, enjoy, and good luck tonight, and best of show. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, Jason. Lindsay, Colton, Swagger, thank you very much. So the first available slot of the evening in the seven that will be decided for best of show is there as we look at the herding group overall results. The old English Sheepdog first, the Bouvier second, the Pembroke third, and the Border Collie taking fourth in that herding group. And throw Swagger's picture in there as the herding group winner, awaiting the four winners from last night in the tour, and excuse me, the toy, hound, non-sporting, and sporting groups. A couple more groups to go to fill out the category for best of show, and that champion will be crowned later on tonight. But Swagger gets a little breather, but the night not done for that old English sheepdog. He'll be back later to vie for 
best in show. It's the look on your face And your pining embrace That say we'll be together again Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My friend Amy works with kids with autism and developmental delays. And that's me, Sylvia. Amy got me free of charge from Canine Companions for Independence to be her assistant. Together we help improve kids' language skills, motor development, stuff like that. All they seem to want to do is laugh and give me hugs. To find out how you can help bring children with disabilities together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Unlike most superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Here at the Orange County Convention Center, final night of this 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. We continue our journey to crown a champion in the best of show, but a lot of other categories and events here. What if we combine what dogs love to do, like go fetch and run? Check out a little bit of fly ball. My name is Michelle King, and this is Grudge. And fly ball is a team sport of two sets of four dogs, relay racing over four hurdles, hitting a box, getting a ball, and coming back over four hurdles. Mixed breed, purebred, short, little, doesn't matter. Any dog can do it. Uh, it's the fastest dog sport out there. There's no other sport that's faster. Um, and it's really almost the only team sport um, for dogs and humans. The AKC Humane Fund Awards for Canine Excellence, also known as the ACE Awards, honor outstanding dogs that demonstrate the power and importance of the human-canine bond. This is the 15th year that the AKC has presented the awards to dogs in five categories. Exemplary Companion Dog, Search and Rescue Dog, Service Dog, Therapy Dog, and Uniform Services Canine. This year, all five of our ACE winners receive a full year of pet health insurance, courtesy of our sponsor, Pet Partners, and a donation is made in their name to a pet charity of the owner's choice. Join us as we commend these very special dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the ring are Patricia M. Cruz and tonight's first ACE recipient. In the category of exemplary companion dog, we have Boomer, an Australian Shepherd, and her owner, Connie Diltz of Smicksburg, Pennsylvania. I'm with Connie Diltz and Boomer, the Exemplary Companion Ace Award honoree. So August 4th, 2013 was just a normal day for you. You guys were going on your everyday walk yes. with your two dogs, and, and then what happened? Uh, the bear came out of the woods and, and charged me, came right for, for me, and, and then stood up, it slashed at my face, and I put my arm up, and it got my wrist and my arm. And I fell back, and then it instantly lunged to bite my face. And so when I screamed for her, then she immediately lunged and jumped on the bear onto the shoulder, and then around to the back of the neck and was hanging on it with her paws. And I thought, you know, if she couldn't stop it, mm -hmm. Um, and so I really screamed at her. She knew, I mean, she just knew, and she 
kind of took her back legs and dug into it to work herself up and around and repositioned herself at the other side of it so she could get at its face and then just started biting it and biting it and biting it. And it's, it's crazy that animals have such an, an instinct, a natural right. instinct to want to protect, like right. you said. Yeah, and you know, that, that day, I mean, if she was just giving everything she could for me. I mean, it was just, she knew, she knew I was in trouble. When you got the phone call and found out that you guys were receiving the ACE award. Oh, I was just so happy. I mean, I just, um, I just was really happy for her. I mean, we're just so honored for the award, but most honored just for her. So everybody can um, hear about what she did for me and, and that all the glory goes to her because she deserves every bit of it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you the 2014 American Kennel Club Humane Fund Ace Award Exemplary Companion Dog, Boomer. Well, I'm crying. <laughs> you crying? Well, they certainly say a dog can change your life. In this case, save a save life. Save your life. And Boomer and Connie from Pennsylvania, congratulations again. Well, the action ready to continue here. The best veteran dog group coming up here in a moment from the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My buddy Tommy is an artist and I'm his assistant, Hailey. Actually, I've been helping Tommy with a lot of things since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence. I help him get around, reach things he can't get to, keep him smiling, sometimes I'm even his paintbrush. To find out how you can help bring people like Tommy together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. <coughs> You know, here at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, dogs are here young and old. But don't let all the young pups get all the glory. Our Lindsay McCormick says, you better save some love for the older guys and gals. This is the first year for a veterans competition at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. It was a way for us to celebrate the great dogs of the past and give them a, a chance to, to come back into the show ring again. And so the nearly 300 of, of these dogs have come back to, to compete at the, at the show this year and, and take another turn around the ring. It's been fantastic. The reception has been tremendous. Nearly 300 of these veteran dogs have come back to compete and it's great for the owners too. They remember the days when their dogs were young and, and vital and, and were flying around the show ring and it's so much fun for them to come back and let them fly around the ring again. The dogs don't know they're old. Uh, just their bodies may not be as willing as their spirits are. And uh, that's part of what makes the competition 
fun and, and memorable for both the, the handlers and, and the crowd, of course. They, they really enjoy seeing these old greats around the ring. It's time for the veteran dogs. Please welcome from Cincinnati, Ohio, Mr. Roger R. Hardinger. Our stewards for the best veteran in show are Mr. Doug Lundgren, AKC Vice President, Mr. James P. Crowley, AKC Executive Secretary, Mr. Jason Taylor, Yukonuba Communications Director, and Ms. Victoria Seiler, Yukonuba Breeder Communications Manager. May we have the veteran dogs, please? Ready to go here in this veteran dog group. From the sporting group, this is Gordon Setter, number seven. So we have Mr. Roger Hardinger from Cincinnati, Ohio, judging. He is one of very few judges that are licensed to judge all breeds Hello, in the United baby. States. You he started old, with you standard schnauzers. And he's honored, I was talking to him a few days ago, honored to do this veteran competition. All right, so I want you to move straight down and back for me, would you please, right here. Veterans have to be, to compete in the veteran class, at least seven years of age or older. And throughout the course of the weekend, we've heard some of the judges <laughs> asking about the ages. I'll hold that thought here for a moment as we get ready for our next contestant. And this is the Gordon Setter, the heaviest boned of the setters, representing the sporting group. Okay, I want you to take him around the ring for me. This is Gatlin. He's seven years old. From the Hound group, this is Whippet, number 22. Smile. You can smile too then. Yeah, Roger Hardinger tells Amanda Giles, the handler of this whippet, to All right, smile. Just take him straight down and back on me, would you please? This was a very successful whippet in its show career before retiring. Tawny is the name. I was going to ask you, we've heard a lot of the judges throughout the weekend ask the age of the dog. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of factoring in what he's looking at as he goes about judging that dog? Well, because some breeds mature more slowly than others, and some, you know, are at their peak at 10. So uh, it's very de okay, dependent on the breed. The me, would you please? This is Tawny, who, by the way, 48 best in shows in career. Seven years old. From the working group, this is Siberian Husky number 11. So this is just Jammin, eight-year-old Siberian okay, Husky representing the working the group. And Siberian Huskies are one of those breeds that they look young, they act young when they're, you know, 9, 10, 11. They have so much energy. You look at this dog, you couldn't tell it was eight years old. Plenty of get up and go right now for that Husky. Okay, let's take him around for me, thank you. Beautiful looking Siberia. Mm -hmm.
From the Terrier Group, this is Smooth Fox Terrier, number 43. This is another very successful dog in its own career prior to retiring. Shown by one of its owners, Amy Booth. Seven-year-old Smooth Fox Terrier. Turning on a dime. You can tell he's been in the ring a few times, right? <laughs> they don't forget. Take him around for me, would you please? Four square, that's what they like. From the toy group, this is Brussels Griffon, number 25. Can't see it from the overhead shot, but when you get right up close and personal, there's that distinctive face. Exactly. Little turned up jaw. Makes the Brussels Griffon so cute. This is a seven-year-old Brussels, shown by Jenny Wrangler. She showed this dog, uh, as she's a professional handler, and she showed this dog when he was being campaigned. And now he's back in as a veteran. Take him around for me, would you please? From the non-sporting group, this is Tibetan Spaniel, number 16. Come on, sweetie. This is Lollipop, being handled today by Ernesto Lara. Nine-year-old Tibetan Spaniel. Thank you, sir. Let's take him down and back on this, please. <laughs> Looks happy to be in the ring. <laughs> One of the most veteran in this veteran dog That's class. Right, it's our oldest dog so far. It's in great coat. Take him around for me, would you? Tracking. From the herding group, Hello, this is Pooley, number five. This is an eight-year-old Pooley. This is the Pooley that we just saw compete in the herding group. I was going to say, if this dog looks familiar, and it very should. Very good, very good. <laughs> okay. Take him down and back on it, please. Ziggy. Gonna make the rounds here as the final competitor in this best veteran dogs class. I love his name. Cord maker Rumpus Bumpus. Take him around for me, would please. Does have the cord factor working. <laughs> yeah, you got it. A little mop in motion. <laughs> this is a special event at AKC Ukanuba National Championship. It's the first time that we've had the event. We saw over 300 veteran dogs compete over the course of two days. Now they're going to be, it's going to be one best veteran very soon. Okay, I want you to take them around one at a time, come up behind the other dogs or finish up back here one at a time. First dog, please. 
Well, one more circuit for each of these seven contenders vying for the best yeah. veteran dog yeah. on it. The Gordon Setter. That's Gatlin. Seven-year-old Whippet. It's our Siberian Husky. Smooth Fox Terrier. Seven-year-old Brussels Griffon. The old one of the bunch, the nine-year-old Tibetan Spaniel. And Ziggy, who was alphabetical order, he'd be bringing up the rear. <laughs> and he is here, the Pooley. I think he's ready. Here come all of our presenters with the ribbons and trophies. I'd first of all like to thank the American Kennel Club and Yukonuba for having best veteran tonight because I think it's a really important part of our sport. Secondly, I'd like to thank AKC and Yukonuba for having me judge best veteran tonight. <laughs> I seem to fit in with the veteran for some reason. There's so many good dogs out here for the, me to pick from, and I do thank the judges that sent them to me because they really, they really made good selections. Unfortunately, I can only pick one of them. I'd like to pick many of them. But in this case tonight, uh, I'm going to pick the Spooth Fox Terrier. <laughs> Amy Booth with her Smooth Fox Terrier. Very accomplished show career when he was being campaigned. Mr. Hardinger has chosen the Smooth Fox Terrier number 43 as the best veteran in show. So there is life after retirement. <laughs> you can come back and win best veteran in show, and that Smooth Fox Terrier has done that winning this category tonight. A new event here at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. So the Smooth Fox Terrier takes this class, the best veteran dog, and a smooch from the owner and handler. Victory for that Smooth Fox Terrier. Dogs of the Mountain Watch. Dogs like Rio have to be sharp, so they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf, so I'm not just her buddy, I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Beyond the pedigrees, beyond the competition, beyond the trophies, there are people who love dogs almost as much as dogs love people. Who look after them the way they look after us. Because what is at the heart of the American Kennel Club is a passion and an unwavering concern 
for the purebred dog. If you share that passion, visit us at akc.org. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 25% off fall and winter apparel. Plus, earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. Well, a champion before and a champion once again. The Smooth Fox Terrier this time in the best veteran dog category. Lindsay McCormick standing by with our winners. Lindsay? Thanks, Jason. I said to Amy, it looks like Dodger never retired. He still knows exactly what to do. He what definitely loves what he does. Since retirement, what have you guys been doing to stay busy? Well, we have plenty of his puppies, and we've been showing them and uh, continuing on in the breeding program. But he always just looks so good. It was so tempting to enter him in veteran and show him, and I had so much fun. I think he did, too. Well, the veteran category, obviously seven years and older. How old is Dodger? He's eight. Wow, so he just made the yes, cut. He did. <laughs> and congratulations again. Very exciting for you guys. <laughs> Jason, the one thing about aging is they never forget where the liver pocket is. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an artful Dodger, then wouldn't he? He knows where the treats are. He's a champion tonight in the best veteran dog class here in Orlando. Unlike most superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Riding the trails of the Alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my friend, Cole. And that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Oh, just some of the sights and stars of the week here at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship for 2014. And that trophy, that's the one they're vying for. The quest for best in show will continue here in a little bit. Almost terrier time. But first, how about we tell you about the obedience competition? Ready, stay, listen. Here's Lindsay. We're here at the Obedience Classic, and I'm joined by AKC Director of Obedience Rally and Tracking, Pamela Manteton. How, what does this obedience training competition entail? The Obedience Classic is a tournament style competition, meaning it's a two-day competition where the scores are cumulative. 
And we have dogs that are competing from the novice class level, which is a beginner level obedience, all the way through our master's class, which is our obedience trial champion dogs, dogs that have earned their obedience trial championship are competing. So what separates, say, the champion from second place? You know, it could be any number of things. At the champion level, say, it could be a crooked sit could be worth the half a point that costs them first or second place. I'm here with David Maurer and Buster, who you guys have been training in the Obedience Classic for quite some several time now. Years, several years, yeah. What has been his favorite competition? Well, Obedience is mainly what we do, just Obedience. Well, can you guys show me some tricks? Because I need to train my dog. He's failed Obedience school four times. <laughs> it's not a joke. And I, I need to learn. Buster, sit. Come on. Buster, sit. Good boy. Down. Sit. Stand. Back. Down, sit, okay, good boy. Where does his name come from? Where does Buster? Dave and Buster Restaurant. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was, hunt I was hunting for a pup, and w I went to a Dave and Buster Restaurant, and I said, you know what, that's what I'm gonna call him. So he, he's Dave and Buster. Well, every time I go into Dave and Buster's, I'll You'll be reminded, I'll, be, think, I'll think of him, and I'll be reminded that I need to go home and train my own dog. <laughs> Sure, Lindsay able to pick up some tips here throughout the weekend from some of the great folks working in the obedience class. Uh, the Terriers, they're ready to go here. And it's just about time to talk Terriers here. And that's what we'll do. Jason Knapp here alongside Gina DiNardo. Well, the night's been great so far, but the Terriers are up. There's a ton of them and a ton of talented Terriers. Give us some things to keep our eye on when we look at this group. Well, we have 31 Terriers in the Terrier group, and they are hardwired to hunt. There's basically two types of Terriers. You can have your short-legged Terriers that were bred to go to ground, and your longer-legged Terriers that dig out their quarry. Uh, certainly, these Terriers are... Uh Independent, shall we say? They got some spunky spirit there, so we'll see what this group has to offer. Again, 31 strong. This Terrier group, they are standing by and ready to go, and so too is Jeff Michaels, our public address announcer, to bring them on out. Now it's time for the Terrier group. Please welcome from Sperryville, Virginia, Mrs. Karen C. Wilson. Our steward for the Terrier Group is Mr. Carl Ashby III. May we have the Terrier Group, please? Terriers, Terriers, and more <laughs> Terriers. It's going to take a while to get all 31 of them in this ring. And the next to the last of the groups to fill out the list for best in show. Working group coming up a little bit later on as well. Terriers ready to go here. Karen Wilson, the judge from Virginia, will oversee this group and work her brain and use all her judgment skills to pick the best. And Judge Wilson, who began in dogs in 1966 with an Airedale Terrier, has bred Airedales, Karen Terriers, and Irish Setters. She was always an owner handler herself. And she's doing what we customarily see. The judges is walking down the line to get an initial impression, see what's in the ring. A good way to start collecting your thoughts. It's a hard job to sort through 31. She Excellent was, dogs. She was smart too. Flats, no heels. It's a long yes, walk all the yes. way around. Here. Very, very smart. <laughs> <laughs> Noisy. 
see. Mm. They're happy barking. <laughs> Thank you. We have the first dog, please. Thank you. And we're ready to roll. Airedale Terrier. Developed near the Air River in Yorkshire, England, Airedale Terriers are the largest of the terrier breeds. A cross between the early black and tan terrier and the otter hound, they were bred to hunt foxes, badgers, and the like. Airedales love to make friends with people, and one of their greatest joys is playing with children. This is Airedale Terrier number eight. You mentioned Karen Wilson has worked with this breed. This is Jesse. Do you think you get a little bit more in-depth look of this dog from a judge that's really worked with them hand in hand? I think that you have a slightly more critical eye and also more confidence in the breeds that you've owned yourself. Uh, I don't think that that weighs heavily when you come down to pointing, one, two, three, or four, but yeah, this is Jesse. Carrie Blue Terrier, developed in the rugged mountainous area of County Kerry, Ireland, from which they take their name. Hard-working Kerry Blue Terriers have been used as ratters, hunters, guards, and to herd sheep and cattle. They even have been used as police dogs in England. The blue in the, his name comes from the color of their soft and silky coat. This is Kerry Blue Terrier number 21. And this is Stone. Beautiful name, beautiful dog. Young dog, about two and a half years of age. Handled tonight by Tracy Sars. This dog was winner of best of breed at the Montgomery County Kennel Club Dog Show this past fall, which is the world's place. largest terrier show. And you defeated 105 carry blues that day. Some stiff competition there and here at the national championship. Soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Although medium in size, soft-coated Wheaton Terriers are still one of the largest terriers. Alert and steady companions, they combine a happy outlook with a courageous spirit. The breed has been known in Ireland for more than 200 years and is possibly the forerunner of the Kerry Blue Terrier. Wheaton served as herding and Thanks, guard sir. dogs and undertook the typical terrier duties of rat control. This is soft-coated Wheaton Terrier number 12. This is Gabby, and if you want to get on Gabby's good side, bring steak. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> She's herded duck and sheep. You knew terriers could herd. It's pretty impressive. And this dog has Thanks, a sir. soft coat. Down, Most please. terriers have a wiry coat. It has a soft coat, but it does require a lot of grooming. The coat mats. You need to brush it a lot. Good evening. American Staffordshire Terrier. American Staffordshire Terriers combine the best qualities of the two breeds from which they were derived. The spirit and the gameness of the terrier and the courage and boldness of the bulldog. Bred to be fighting dogs in the 19th century, the Amstaff is by nature a calm and quiet dog Thanks, who sir. loves his family with all his heart and guards them just as dearly. This is American Staffordshire Terrier number 31. And this has been the number one Amstaff last couple of years goes by the name of Flash. Mm -hmm. This breed is very protective, but they're also natural clowns and they have a great affection for their families. They're strong and determined. Thank you, sir. Take him around, please. That fits, as owners say, when out in public, Flash is very outgoing and the biggest mooch. <laughs> Irish Terrier. Nicknamed the Daredevil, the Irish Terrier is a loyal and friendly dog. Deeply devoted to their owners, owners, they have enthusiastic playmates and guardians of children. One of the oldest of the Terrier breeds, the Irish bears many similarities to the Airedale, Welsh and Wire Fox Terriers, and is every bit as smart and quick. This is Irish Terrier number seven. Another top dog at his breed, McCallan. Great Irish name. <laughs> Absolutely fills the bill. Mm. Multiple best in show winner, the number one Irish Terrier for the last three years running. Multiple national specialty winner. 
shown by professional handler Chris Christian Rangel. You saw his wife, Jenny, earlier with the Brussels Griffon. Colored Bull Terrier. There are two varieties for the Bull Terrier breed, the colored, as seen here, and the white. The breed's origin dates back to about 1835. Strong, muscular, and active, this breed is full of fire, but sweet of disposition. In accordance with the standard, the colored variety must be any color other than white, or any color with white, just as long as the white does not predominate. This is Colored Bull Terrier, number nine. We heard that description. Clint fills that role with kind of the white in the front, a couple of other spots. This is another breed that's very strong, very athletic, has this classic egg-shaped head. It's a hallmark of the breed. Thanks, ma'am. Around, please. Clint is the number two bull terrier. His full name, including Dirty Harry, hence <laughs> Clint, Clint Eastwood. White Bull Terrier. Good evening. Except for color, white bull terriers share an identical standard with the colored. Their standard states that their color is white, though markings on the head are permissible. Any markings elsewhere on the coat are to be severely faulted. This is the white bull terrier number six. Summer, the white Thank bull. Up and back, just part way if you like. So same standard as the colored bull terrier except for just the requirement it has to be almost oh, mostly white. It's allowed to have a little splash of color like here on the ear, but all white. Laura King, the handler here for summer. Thank you, ma'am. Take him around, please. She's a cutie. <laughs> Her, sorry. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The coal miners of Staffordshire, England combined the Bulldog with a small terrier similar to the Manchester Terrier. The result was the Staffordshire Bull Terrier that we know today. They are dogs of high intelligence who are obedient and possess great courage. Staffordshire Bull Terriers are sweet-tempered, affectionate dogs who respond well to training. This is Staffordshire Bull Terrier Thanks. number seven. Back, Phil Briasco, one of the Co-owners and the handler here started in the sport in 1965 with Great Danes and now has Quinn here, this beautiful Staffordshire Bull Terrier. This is a multiple best in show, best in specialty show winner. Thank you. Take him around. Please. Number one Staffordshire Bulldog for four years. He's defeated more Staffordshires in the United States than any other. 2300 and always owner handled. Rat Terrier. The Rat Terrier is a multi purpose companion dog originally bred to hunt rodents and varmint. He is a sturdy, compact, is small it? to medium sized, party colored dog, Sorry. giving the appearance of elegance and athleticism. His short, smooth coat requires regular brushing. The Rat Terrier is loyal and active and loves being a member of his human family. This is Rat Terrier number 19. And another top flight dog with a great pedigree, the most successful Rat Terrier in the history of the breed, Traveler. This is a breed that's very new to AKC, was first recognized or registered in 2013. It's a sturdy, athletic breed. They're usually friendly with other dogs. Fun trick for Traveler is retrieving champagne corks. Thank you, sir. Around, please. Fun, a champagne going on there. <laughs> Might be if hear his name called a little bit later yeah. on. Someone's going to be popping some champagne tonight. Bedlington Terrier. Taking their name from the English mining town of Bedlington, these gutsy terriers' most distinctive feature is their curly, woolly coat. The Bedlington Terrier is sometimes described as having the head of a lamb and the heart of a lion. 
Neither fussy nor mischievous, the Bedlington appears outwardly calmer or milder than some other terriers. Loving and with a big heart, they make a lively playmate for children. This is Bedlington Terrier number 14. A little extra primping there for Blue Sapphire, elegant name for this elegant looking dog. These are lovely dogs. They are, they do appear very quiet, but when they get to do their job, they're feisty little terriers like all the rest. They're be bred for great speed, and you see they have a curved back like some of the faster hounds we've seen, like a whippet or a greyhound, and that structure helps them be very speedy. Standard Manchester Terrier. Sleek and tidy, Manchester Terriers are the picture of elegance in a small dog. Always black and tan, the standard variety should be over 12 pounds but not exceed 22. The Manchester has a quick protective nature, very much a part of the family. They are happiest with gentle children and are deeply attached to them. This is Standard Manchester Terrier number 15. And this is Apollo, and he is on stage right now. <laughs> Number two, all breed Manchester. Finished his championship with two group ones, and he was winner's dog at the 2013 National. Very energetic little breed. You saw the toy Manchester last night Thank in the toy group. Take him around, please. Economy of movement there in that bouncy step. Yep. Miniature Schnauzer. One of the few right. terriers not Bye. created in Great Britain. The miniature Schnauzer was developed in the late 19th century in Germany. The breed was originally bred to be a small farm dog, able to go to ground for various varmint. They are devoted and playful. Their special dignity shows in their whiskered face. This is Miniature Schnauzer number 19. Mexico, a Mexican champion, and a best in show winner as well. It's a very highly adaptable breed, very sturdy and strong. Like most of the wired haired terriers, they don't shed. Their coats require to be stripped or pulled because the hair keeps growing on these, the wiry terriers. Andrew Peel handling the dog here. Another look for Karen Wilson, our judge from Virginia. Border Terrier. Border Terriers get their name from the border area between England and Scotland. Alert and plucky, they were developed especially to catch the foxes that stalked farmers' livestock. Most interested in being with their owners, boarders are good-natured and loving companions who are always eager for praise. This is Border Terrier number six. Thanks. Cinder has a handful of best in shows, all breeds, seven of them. Being handled tonight by her Breed, uh, breeder owner handler, Karen Fitzpatrick. Seven best in shows. To her credit, number one border terrier last year. A little extra swerve before <laughs> heading down to the end of the line. Smooth Fox Terrier. The Fox Terrier is an old English breed originally bred for the sport of fox hunting. For almost 100 years, they were registered and shown in the United States as one breed with two varieties, smooth and wire. However, in 1984, the American Kennel Club approved separate standards, officially making them two distinct breeds. This is the Smooth Fox Terrier, number 43. Well, no rest for our winner just a little while ago in the veteran dog class. That is Dodger, ready to go one more time. That's right, and owner Amy Rodriguez.
And the veteran, of course, can also be entered in the other categories. Absolutely. They have to compete. At first, they compete in the veteran class, and then the winner of the veteran class goes in to compete for best of breed. So it's eligible for best of breed. Dodger, who was the number one dog in America in 2010, number one dog in Brazil in 2011, with 184 best in shows. <laughs> Wire Fox Terrier. Believed to be the slightly younger of the two breeds, this English breed was used for hunting fox. He should be hardy and full of energy. This is the Wire Fox Terrier, number nine. Well, Rebecca Cross, if you haven't been with us the last couple of nights, has thrilled the crowd here at the Orange County Convention Center with raucous renditions of our national <laughs> anthem. And she's multi-talented as she leads Stryker right now, the Wire Fox Terrier. Very impressive. Stryker is a multiple best and specialty show winner. Top five wire in the country. Thanks, man. Around, please. Well, if Stryker catches the eye here of Karen Wilson, maybe Rebecca will be singing another happy <laughs> tune here at the end of the well, night. She's got the voice for it, that's for sure. Welsh Terrier. Bred to hunt otter, fox, and badger, Welsh Terriers are delightful companions, always looking for action and entertainment. They look similar to their cousin, the Lakeland, though slightly stockier. They also resemble the Airedale, though the Welsh is smaller. Originally, this breed was known as the Old English Terrier, or Black and Tan Wire-Haired Terrier. This is Welsh Terrier, number 18. This is Jenny, number one Welsh Terrier. 39 best in shows, 173 group firsts. Currently the number seven all breed dog in America. As we've alluded to throughout our coverage this weekend, 17 of the top 20 dogs yep. in the United States are here competing in this AKC Yukonuba National Championship this weekend. It is a stacked field in every group. The best of the best come here to compete. Thank you, sir. Take That's a place. beautiful pose. Wow. Mm hmm. I got goosebumps, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even hear a photographer <laughs> sell, say cheese. Every once in a while, I get goosebumps. Good evening. Australian Terrier. One of the smallest of the Terriers, Australian Terriers were developed in the harsh conditions of the Australian Outback, where they served as ratters, sentinels, and even as sheep herders. Ready for any situation, Aussies consider themselves part of the family and get along well with other animals and with children. This is Australian Terrier number 21. And this is Izzy, number one of the breed a couple of years ago, and certainly a factor tonight, winning that breed title here at the national championship. It's kind of an all-purpose terrier in Australia. It killed snakes and rats. It herded sheep and geese. It would sound alarm for intruders. Thank you, sir. Take a mat, please. They always look like they're smiling to me. <laughs> Lakeland Terrier. Lakeland Terriers originated in the beautiful Lake District in northern England. Farmers often gathered their hounds along with a group of Lakelands to deal with foxes that were stealing their chickens. Frisky, feisty, and fun. They love to be the center of the owner's lives. This is Lakeland Terrier number five. Frisky, feisty, and fun sounds like a pretty good combination for the Lakeland Terrier, for Harry here. It's the number one Lakeland Terrier in the country, multiple best in show winner. Another small, steady farm terrier. A 
That's very pretty too. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Take them around. It's popping right into the proper form. Exactly. Carson Russell Terrier. Originating in Southern England nearly 200 years ago, Parson Russell Terriers were developed as a fox hunting breed. Known in this country as early as the 1930s, the Parson Russell is a terrier among terriers. Buoyant and intelligent, determined and relentless. They are endowed with the inability to quit and no capacity to feel fear, regardless of the odds or consequences. This is Parson Russell Terrier number six. And this is Harper, number one Parson Russell Terrier in the AKC standings. One at the Great Western Terrier Association and Montgomery County Kennel Club. National, their national specialty was held there. The winner of that this year. Russell Terrier. Originating in England and developed in Australia, the Russell Terrier is a feisty, energetic dog bred to hunt fox and find varmin below ground. These small, playful dogs are confident and highly intelligent. Russell Terriers are devoted family companions, doing best with families with an active lifestyle. Their weatherproof coat requires minimal grooming beyond brushing and occasional bathing. This is Russell Terrier number 15. Thank you, sir. Lexi. Excuse me, that is not Lexi. Lexi is up next. The Cairn Terrier. This is the Russell Terrier. Getting a little workout. <laughs> First recognized by AKC in 2002. They're very happy little dogs. They love their people, but they need to be busy. They're supposed to be sturdy and algebraic. Karen Taylor, Terrier. Karen Taylor. The Karen Terrier is so closely related to the Scottish and West Highland White Terriers that they often used to come from the same <laughs> litters. Earlier in their histories, the types were defined as different from each other, other by color only. Though small, Karens are not much for the pampered life. They prefer to explore and play lively games and can be equally happy in the city or on the farm. This is Karen Ta Terrier, number eight. And this is Lexi. <laughs> and interesting, when you have another handler working with a dog, when you've got a handler that has multiple dogs in this class. Right, so this is the number one Karen Terrier being so shown by Simon Same. He is an assistant for Gabriel Rangel, who is in the ring with a Scotty. So sometimes if you show more than one breed and you win, you, you can't show two at once. <laughs> and Gabriel has at least three by my count in this category. He's a very, very successful terrier handler. Good evening. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? The Glen of Imal Terrier. Glen of a Mall Terrier was initially developed to rid the home and farm of vermin, as well as to hunt badger and fox. Game and spirited with great courage when called upon, the Glen is otherwise gentle and docile. Although generally less easily excited than other terriers, the Glen is always ready to give chase. This is Glen of a Mall Terrier, number 15. And this is Ned, very successful dog of this breed. I'll say he's the top winning Glen of them all of all time. He's got a best in show to his credit. He is from Finland. He won the Helsinki World Dog Show in 2014. Best of breed at Westminster this year. National specialty winner. Thank you. Take him around. This is a very rare breed. But they're, they're wonderful. So many breeds to choose from here. Miniature Bull Terrier. 
The miniature Bull Terrier is in every way, except size, exactly like the Bull Terrier. Descended from the Bulldog and the White English Terrier, Bull Terriers were meant to, at first, be tough fighting dogs. That quality never spoiled their love of people, though. A little bundle of strength, the Mini Bull requires a firm, confident owner who is consistent in enforcing the rules. This is Miniature Bull Terrier, number seven. <laughs> so we saw a trio of Bull Terriers before, and now the Mini Bull. They're born show-offs. They come in many colors. They're supposed to be very alert and curious. The same classic egg-shaped head that you see in the standard size Bull Terriers. There's a little of that <laughs> show-offness. Exactly. Oh. Eggs, take them around, please. Scottish Terrier. With their heavy whiskers and eyebrows and short body, Scottish Terriers are one of the oldest and most instantly recognizable of the Terriers. Playful as puppies, they grow into dignified adults. They are likely to become attached to one person and lead a life of quiet dignity dedicated to that companion. Despite their sometimes reserved nature, the Scotty remains a true Terrier. This is Scottish Terrier, number 18. And this is Magic, Thanks. the okay. number one Scotty, multiple best in shows. Magic is the daughter of Sadie, who was best in show at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship back in 2009. Sadie actually recently passed away, but here Magic is following in her footsteps. Talked about those handlers juggling duties. Mm -hmm. Sky Terrier. Growing up in the rugged lands of Sky, a northwestern Scottish island, Sky Terriers were a hardworking rodent exterminator for hundreds of years. Their glossy, flowing coat which may cause it to look like a dog of luxury and privilege, in reality serve them as protection, not only from the damn cold, but also from the bite of the animals that they pursued. This is Sky Terrier, number nine. Good time, Charlie. Yeah, I've been having a good time as the number one terrier here in 2014. That's right, he's number four all breed dog. Number one Sky Terrier of all time. 43 best in shows. He's owned by Victor Malzoni and Craig's Moore Kennels. So one of the top five dogs in the country, number one in this breed. And Charlie hang on to the crown here. I hear he has a favorite treat or toy. Oh, his favorite toy is a stuffed alligator. It goes Thanks, everywhere sir, he goes. Around, Handler Larry Cornelius doing a great job. Might be gator time for Charlie if he gets a win later. <laughs> Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Hailing from the same hilly border between Scotland and England as the Border Terrier, Dandy Dinmont Terriers get their name from a character in Sir Walter Scott's 1814 novel, Guy Mannering. Dandies are one of many terrier breeds to be bred to be hunting otter and badger this delightful and entertaining dog is a clown as well as a faithful companion. This is Dandy Dinmont Terrier, number 22. Fix it for you. And this Dandy goes by Angie, short for Angelina, Thank the ballerina you. there. <laughs> Multiple best in show and specialty winner. Sure, After eight not? years of age and two litters, she's back in the ring. That little ballerina still got some <laughs> spring in those toes. Very unique shape for a terrier. It's a ser series of curves. 
Thank you, sir. Take a round, please. West Highland White Terrier. The West Highland White Terrier is one of the Scottish breeds of terriers. Originally differentiated by their color alone, the Westie is all terrier, a large amount of Scottish spunk, determination, and devotion crammed into a small body. Outdoors, they are truly sporty. In the house, they are all that can be desired of a pet. This is West Highland White Terrier, number six. Thank you, sir. CC. Alfonso Escobedo with the handling duties. Showing for Paula and Charles Cohen. This is the number one Westie in America right now. Westminster best of breed winner. A little shout out to Charles. Been in the hospital for surgery. Thank you, sir. Watching around, tonight. Certainly best wishes going to him. Hopefully CC maybe will make him feel a little bit better. <laughs> Probably does all the time regardless That's of a right. win tonight or not. Chesky Terrier. Intelligent and full of energy. The Chesky Terrier was developed in the Czech Republic and bred to hunt vermin, fox and badger. They are active dogs that can be reserved with strangers. The Chesky sports a soft, long, silky coat in shades of gray, which requires monthly clipping to stay in good form. They are loyal, gentle, and patient by nature, making them a good family pet. This is Chesky Terrier, yes, number 11. And this is Jilly, Tim Smith, placing the dog back down and ready to get to work. Tim is an owner handler. This dog is one of the terriers that has a soft coat, so again, it's not stripped but clipped. Thanks. Round, a new breed to AKC, just registered in 2011. Good look at that view. Uh, Chile heading to the end of the line. Norfolk Terrier. Norfolk Terriers, Norfolk and Norwich Terriers were once considered the same breed. Disagreement by breeders as to whether the dog should have prick or drop ears resulted in the creation of two breeds. Those with drop ears became the Norfolk Terrier. Though most Norfolks today are companions for people, they are natural rodent and varmint hunters. This is Norfolk Terrier number nine. Thank you, sir. Part way up and back, please. Winston, relative newcomer. He's just starting his career. Being shown by the Great Terrier handler, Peter Green. Winston is the great grandson of Coco, who won Best in Show at the 2003 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. And what's interesting is this is the first dog that Peter Green, it's his own personal dog. So it's the first dog which he's raised from puppyhood to a show dog. Thank you, sir. Round and this place. gentleman has shown hundreds and hundreds of terriers. Got to be a little extra special. Mm -hmm. Had that chance to win tonight. Norwich Terrier. Good evening. The Norwich Terrier, the prick-eared breed, developed in England in the late 19th century from a variety of working terriers. Valued for their small size, the Norwich is quick, sharp, and ever-moving. Bond of children, they make loyal, affectionate companions. <laughs> this is Norwich Terrier number 19. Busy. They're all on. <laughs> okay. And Robbie, back, the Norwich Terrier, is our last and final of the 31 Terriers that Karen Wilson will have to choose from. Robbie tonight is being shown by Andrew Green, who just happens to be Peter Green's son. a gold grand Thank champion, you. a multiple Down best in specialty winner, best of breed at Montgomery County Kennel Club. Won at the World Dog Show in Budapest, Hungary. Well, this should be an interesting cut mm, decision. This is a lot of beautiful terriers to sort through.
So do you have a favorite terrier? Wire Fox was very nice. Mm -hmm. I have the Amstaff out here. Please. We're going to pull out the Amstaff Terrier. Border Terrier, Smooth Fox Terrier, the Welsh Terrier. May I have the Karen, please? Here goes the Lakeland Terrier, the Karen Terrier, the Miniature Bull Terrier, the Sky Terrier, the Dandy Dinmont, and the Norfolk. Take them one time around, one at a time. Cinder, the border. Here comes Dodger, the smooth fox terrier. Looking for the double is Dodger. <laughs> That's right. There's Welsh Terrier, top 10 all breed dog. Here comes the Lakeland. Karen Terrier. Miniature Bull Terrier. Ah, Sky Terrier seems to be a favorite in the crowd. And a top five dog all breed in country. The Dandy Dinmont and the Norfolk, the final two making the cut. Now Judge Wilson will announce fourth through first place. We will begin with fourth place. Fabulous lineup of dogs this evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to adjudicate this wonderful collection of terriers. Please all notice the superior quality that we have here tonight. Fourth place, the Karen Terrier. So the Karen Terrier takes fourth. Thank you. Lexi, the Karen. Third place, the Smooth. Smooth Fox Terrier Dodger getting group third tonight. And he won the veteran category earlier. Second place, the Border Terrier. There's Cinder, the Border Terrier. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, God. Thank you so much. And the winner of this great collection of dogs the Sky Terrier. There we go. Charlie the Sky Terrier does it. Adds to his collection of wins, a group at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Now the number one Terrier in 2014 does it again. Mrs. Wilson has chosen group first, the Sky Terrier, second, the Border Terrier, third, the Smooth Fox Terrier, fourth, the Karen Terrier. So, Charlie, the champ here in this Terrier category. Six of the seven spots for best in show are filled. Only one spot remaining. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp, so they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies 
to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My friend Amy works with kids with autism and developmental delays. And that's me, Sylvia. Amy got me free of charge from Canine Companions for Independence to be her assistant. Together we help improve kids' language skills, motor development, stuff like that. All they seem to want to do is laugh and give me hugs. To find out how you can help bring children with disabilities together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Unlike most superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Well, the Terrier group is complete. Charlie is the winner. The Sky Terrier has 43 best in shows to his credit and the chance for 44. That's coming up a little bit later tonight. But right now, Charlie and company standing by to talk with Lindsay McCormick. Lindsay? Wow, what a year for the breeders of the Sky. <laughs> How much work is it to maintain this coat? Um, his bath takes about two and a half hours to bathe him and dry him, and then about an hour and a half at the show each day. Wow. And what is the purpose of a Sky Terrier? Well, all Terriers are basically bred for the same thing, to kill vermin. Uh, but they come from Scotland, so they did it uh, uh, in the craggy uh, rocks of Scotland. And then you were telling me about his, his little stuffed alligator that he carries around with him well, and the purpose behind that. Well, we live near Gainesville, so he has to have a gator. <laughs> and where is that right now? Uh, that's in his crate waiting for him right now. Well, congratulations. We can't wait to see what you guys do later on this evening. <laughs> Back to you, Jason. I believe the Gator Chomp might be a little happy for Charlie uh, from Gainesville and see if he can chomp his way through the rest of the competition and win best in show a little bit later on tonight. And again, the results from the Terrier group, the Sky Terrier taking first, then it's the Border Collie in second, Smooth Fox Terrier Dodger, and the Cairn Terrier there in fourth. So six of the seven for best in show are decided. Only the working group slot is available. And that competition in the group portion of this event coming up in just a little bit. But when we come back, we'll hand out another ace award to a deserving service dog. That's coming up here in a moment. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 25% off fall and winter apparel, plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. This is the Duracell Power Mat Go Power Kit. It includes a power mat and a power case. They help make sure your iPhone 5 or 5S is always charged and protected. The power case is powerful enough to give you up to 100% extra battery power protective enough to shield your iPhone from nicks and bruises, and sleek enough that you won't notice it's there until you need it. The power mat makes recharging effortless, 
Instead of looking around for a cable, simply set your case down and you're charging wirelessly. So how does it work? Well, the power case comes with a built-in 2000 milliamp rechargeable battery that gives you up to 100% extra power and eight hours added talk time. Just slide your iPhone into the case and charge anywhere at the press of a button. The four LED lights indicate the level of battery charge of your backup battery. To recharge your iPhone and power case, place it on the center of your power mat. The power mat charges as quickly as a typical wall outlet, and it's smart too. It will fully charge your iPhone first, and only then start charging the backup battery in your power case. When you're away from a power mat, you can also recharge your iPhone and power case via regular micro USB cable. Leave your iPhone charging overnight, and you'll wake up to the great feeling of having up to 200% battery power to last you throughout the day. Visit DuracellPowerMat.com for more information and to bring the power home to your iPhone. Welcome back to the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, brought to you in part by Duracell, never powerless. Now the action continuing here, another ACE award on tap. And for that, let's go to Jeff Michaels, our public address announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our gracious sponsors, Duracell, has provided two lucky winners tonight with a special prize to make sure you're always powered. This is the Duracell Power Seat Giveaway. Who will our lucky winners be? There it is. Congratulations. You've just won a Duracell power mat, backup battery, and wireless case. Now, who will our second winner be? There it is. You, too, have just won an iPhone power mat, backup battery, and wireless case. Thanks to everyone from the Duracell 24-hour power system. Duracell, never be powerless. Ladies and gentlemen, now that. entering the ring are AKC board member Stephen D. Gladstone and tonight's second ACE recipient. In the category of service dog, we have Gander, an All-American, and his owner, Lon Hodge of Vernon Hills, Illinois. I'm with Lon Hodge and Gander, the Service Dog Ace Award honoree. So you were in the Vietnam War. Yes. At what point did you discover that you had post-traumatic stress disorder? It was pretty easy. It was a major panic attack. I thought I was having a heart attack. And uh, so the ambulance takes me out. It took uh, a couple of weeks, and he said, "You got PTSD, you know." And uh, and I was having at that point. Then I started having up to five panic attacks a day, nightmares every night, uh, night terrors. And how was he able to help you? Did your panic attacks start decreasing? And my resting heart rate was about 120 beats a minute. Within a week of Gander coming into my life, uh, uh, it went down to about 80 and hasn't gone back up. So Gander's not only helped you, he's helped thousands of people. Yeah. How, how has he done so? It's kind of mind blowing. You know, Gander has this way of, of opening this magic door to people and, and their defenses fall, their ego boundaries disappear, and they're able to talk about the stuff that's, that's inside of them and hurts them. And you've got to watch it in action. I mean, people melt, and, and they talk about their inmost desires, and it ends up being a healing process, not a grieving process. Well, what you guys have done and what you're continuing to do is so inspirational, and I'm excited to continue to watch you guys change thousands of lives. So congrats on the ACE Award. Thank you. It's well deserved. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you the 2014 American Kennel Club Humane Fund Ace Award Service Dog Recipient, Gander.
A Gander and Lon Hodge, certainly worthy recipients of this most recent ACE Award for their efforts helping not only Lon, but many others, as you heard in that story from Lindsay. Well, the best bred by exhibitor competition, that is on tap for us here as we continue the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. My buddy Tommy is an artist and I'm his assistant, Hailey. Actually, I've been helping Tommy with a lot of things since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence. I help him get around, reach things he can't get to, keep him smiling, sometimes I'm even his paintbrush. To find out how you can help bring people like Tommy together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. <coughs> How about a dog's eye view of the goings on here at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship? Kind of ambling their way around the exhibits here in Orlando. All part of this great competition. We know that breeders are the heart and soul of the sport and nowhere is that more evident than in the Breeders' Championship. This is Best bred by exhibitor in show. Escorting our judge is AKC president and CEO, Mr. Dennis B. Sprung. Please welcome from Newtown, Connecticut, Judge Ms. Patricia W. Lawrence. May we have the finalists to the ring, please. From the sporting group, the Irish setter, number 16, judged by Mrs. Ann Savory Bolas. From the hound group, the bloodhound, number 25, judged by Dr. Ann P. Gallant. From the working group, the Samoyen, number 19, judged by Mrs. Joan P. Anselm. From the Terrier group, the Smooth Fox Terrier, number 11, judged by Mr. Thomas D. Parati. From the toy group, the Shih Tzu, number five, judged by Miss Peggy L. Lloyd.
from the non-sporting group, the Dalmatian number nine, judged by Mrs. Houston Clark. From the herding group, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, number 30, judged by Mrs. Kathleen Steen. Well, we're ready to go here in this best bred by exhibitor group. Jason Ab, Gina DiNardo. Andrew Brace has joined us once again to offer his thoughts on this group. So we have best bred by exhibitor and show, which means that the person showing the dog is also one of its breeders. The actual handler. Yes. And Patricia Lawrence, she's been active in the sport, our judge, for over 50 years. She began with Doberman Pinchers as an exhibitor. She became an all-breed handler. And we'll get a little taste of some of the contenders for best in show in this best bred by exhibitor. A couple of them are in the ring right now. Well, we've got two group winners from what I can see. The Bloodhound's already a group winner, yep. And, and the Shih Tzu. Tzu. And here we have the Irish Setter. This is the bitch, Melitza's my Sharia Moore. Irish Set has been a very racy breed, elegant breed. In the States, of course, yours probably have a little bit more glamour than ours, Gina, at home, would you think? A little bit, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think this is a bitch with, um, with quite a record on it. It's a great win. Congratulations. About very, very distinct colouring, the Irish setter. That rich mahogany, mm -hmm. trademark of the breed. Beautiful feathering. <laughs> or a beautiful dog. And so we created this best bred by exhibitor event right from the very beginning of the Yukonuba National Championship, and it was because we wanted to honour breeders in the sport. We said last night, we'll the say The breeders tonight. are the backbone, Jane. Backbone. They, are, they are the people that produce the dogs. That Thank you, sir. They of either course. keep themselves or they share with companion owners or people who wish to take part in, in exhibition with them. They devote their lives to making breeds better. You well, know. You, know, you know yourself with your background. It, it means a change in lifestyle once you become a dog breeder. That's right. Well, this is the group winning Bloodhound, Jason. Yep, Nathan. Heather Helmer, one of the co-owners, showing him right now. We'll see Nathan a little bit later on. Of course, the breed is famous for its ability to follow scent. And, I mean, even, even now, long after Sherlock Holmes days, a great win. Thank you. They, um, Thank you. they frequently help in, in finding Three lost people. The way down and, and back will be sufficient. Using their ability Yep. which is very, very well developed. And when very they put their head down, right, all those wrinkles go forward. No, their I mean, ears you know, that, go that, down. That wrinkle is practical they because it protects the eyes. They make a great big cup around the nose, and it helps draw the scent Absolutely. up. Absolutely, yeah. And that's yeah. why they are designed to be the best Nathan's, trackers. Nathan's full name is Flesner's International SS. How old is he? Um, he's now four. Four years Take old. Take back mm -hmm. and around, please. Just coming to his best. Mm-hmm. A lot of large dogs, right? Absolutely. Mature around yeah, four or yeah, five yeah, years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, people want dogs to mature too soon, I think. You know, some people get excited if they're not finished by the time they're 12 months of age. But in some breeds, they're not fully mature until they're five and six. Right. Now we have the semi-ed. Mm-hmm. This is Pebbles Run, Play It Again, Ham. Uh, with Amy Keel Green, uh, who's part of a quite a formidable doggy dynasty, Gina, isn't she? Because we saw 
in the terrier group her husband mm -hmm. and her father-in-law competing with the Norfolk and the Norwich. Andrew and Peter Green, mm -hmm. yes. Amy, of course, has been a committed Samoyed breeder for, for many years. And I love the name of this dog, Sire. That's good. His father. What is it? His father's name is Hammy Davis Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Very distinctive, brilliant white coat with silver tips, fabulous eye shape. Really nice one. I'm so happy. And I believe that we're going to see this dog, which is Bogey, the way in the working group coming up next. It wouldn't surprise me at all. He's been in a lot of working groups already. Yeah. <coughs> and I can tell you that all Amy's dogs, they have wonderful kennel facility, but all these Sammies, they live indoors, being bossed around by two very dominant Pomeranians. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Right down into the corner and then around, please. Typical dark black pigment on the eyes and the lips. Give that Sammy smile expression they're so famous for. Famous for their smiling expression. Who's this smooth then, Gina? This is Smooth Fox Terrier, champion absolutely signature. A young dog. Just not even not even two yet. Mm-hmm. Now Breezer Jim Smith. Didn't he win one of the AKC awards for He was our AKC Breeder of the Year, I think two years, two years ago. ago. Yep, yep. Really He's been involved with smooths for many, many years. And uh, we have a couple of absolutely smooths in the UK, actually, that have done very well. So Not being shown tonight by now. breeder owner Dana Gable. Mm -hmm. I love the expression in the Fox Terrier standard where they say they should stand over a lot of ground like a well-made hunter. <laughs> I think if you look at this, this the smooth in the ring now. You can see what that means, Jason. Back into the corner and then Get around. Get that please. demeanor. And they're, seen, they're such clean line dogs, smooths, aren't they? And when they're on their toes, tail up, ears over. Such a pretty picture, right? Absolutely. Mm. Such a smart breed. Great look at it there. The Shih Tzu is next. Rocket already winning the toy group. Best in show coming up. But first, work here in this best bred by exhibitor category. Getting a little warm up for best in show mm, by yeah, trying luck, luck, to... Lucky, uh, lucky Rocket. Hallmark Jolly Rocket Power. And this is um, Luke Ericht, who's been involved with this breed since he was a kid, basically. Canadian originally, I think, isn't he, Gina? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. had a really great We've had a, a, a very interesting discussion with Luke Good actually about Shih Tzu presentation <laughs> one evening. And Luke was telling me that um, he's trying to get away from the over dramatized Shih Tzu top knot. Oh, the top so knot. So, by so American standards, this is this actually is quite not, sober. That's right. So, a top knot for our non doggy exhibitors. The hair on top of the head, which should be done up just with a little, a little band, basically. Um, sometimes you see them. The breed standard actually calls for it to be tied up. Absolutely. And we always, you'll a see a little ribbon in it. They, should, they, the should, have a, they should have hair like a chrysanthemum. But some, 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 some of them in the past have... A little more poofy yes, <laughs> than this one. Yes, we've seen a few spray fans. But yeah. Luke was saying he's trying to get away yeah. from that. I like this. I like the yeah, smaller, yeah, yeah. smaller top knot. So Rocket's going to become a little bit of a trend setter, <laughs> I think. Love it. And the Dalmatian here got a big ovation coming into the ring from the non-sporting group. Well, that's hardly surprising Sorry. because he's another op of our evergreen veterans. Yep. Spotlights Ruffian, seven years of age, have a piece of behaving like a puppy. I don't care. Well, we have it. Well, this breed is bred to go all day long. There's a coach dog running yeah. next to the coaches. They're going to have lots of energy. Seems to be a little scared right now. Yeah. yeah. It happens sometimes. Yeah. You know, these cameras and the big lights and the noise and the music, you know, it's a little... He's it's a wagging his tail, but he's still a little scared. Yeah, a little bit over. Come on, maybe he's just... Boy, that's yeah, a boy. Walk him around, set him up again. 
So Judge Lawrence is going to give her another opportunity to relax her dog because in our shows, the dog has to stand for examination. Of course, of course. And so... But Pat's been a handler herself, yes. and she knows these things happen. So she's been very sympathetic. So Makes a lovely really picture when he's set up. Yeah, he's beautiful. And okay. his tail's wagging. Very distinctive spotting. You know, the spots should be fairly evenly sized, as they are in this case. He's rallied. Yeah. He's okay. It was just one of, those himself. Sometimes one of those Sometimes the cameras scare things. the dogs. Yeah. And, and you know, these the we don't have too many booms tonight, but yeah. um, in the past, I've seen dogs really... <laughs> he's decided... He's going to enjoy his, okay, his come back after all. I'm so sorry. Hey, now you can have it. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think a, a little judge. bit of it's been around the block once or twice. A little bit of bribery's been going on there. Yeah. Right? He's pulled himself together yeah. fine. He's using his toe. Good boy. Very pretty. It's a real test of a handler's nerves. Takes him into the corner. Patience, though, isn't it? When Absolutely. you get these little blips in the big ring. Yeah. <laughs> well done. And last up, our representative from the herding group. Yeah, this is the, uh, the Pembroke Corgi pitch. Coventry, just a little crush. Another of our big winners, who's dam, I think. Did we not say earlier, Jane? Yes. Won something big at the previous AKC show with Bill Shelton and with Steve Layer. Won the group, I believe, here. Uh, yeah, yeah, won the group. Great win. And Congratulations. So she was already in our a the halfway herding down group back, today. Please. Correct. So she's competed once already. Mm -hmm. Back for a second bite of the cherry. <coughs> Bill's one of these breeders that, you know, is established very much a kennel type. You can yes. look at these Pembrokes and, and there's a Coventry look, wouldn't you think, Jeannie? I would agree. He's an excellent breeder. I know him from the days when he was a Doberman Pinscher breeder. Yeah. Well, of course, um, he handled a lot of dogs. Yeah, he's an excellent handler. Were you in fierce competition with him? I have competed with him. <laughs> <laughs> and... He's one to watch and learn from. He's excellent. He's a very, very good dog, man. Before. Yes. We'll see if Etta can help bring him the win here in this best bred by exhibitor competition. And of course, I'm going to ask this, this you to go around one at a time. This is a separate come competition. Come back to this spot, please. So, regardless of what happens with a, our group winners, it has no bearing on their eligibility for best in show, exactly. does it? Exactly. This is just a separate thing with the emphasis on the fact that the dog is actually being handled by one of its breeders. So round again with the Irish setter bitch. Nathan the bloodhound. Group winning bloodhound. And Samoid with Amy. And smooth fox terrier. Our other group winner, the Shih Tzu Rocket. And the Dalmatian, who's, who's still holding up form. He's got over that original blip, I think, quite successfully. And Pembroke rounding out the field. Is it just one award, It's Gina? just one award mm -hmm. for best spread by exhibitor. Mm -hmm. I have to say, you know, full marks to the Dalmatians. And I mean, she's done a great job in getting that dog around, hasn't she? Yes. Pat Lawrence, deep in thought. I would, I she's would have ready. no idea where she's going to point. Neither do I. <laughs> well, 
I don't possibly. And here's huh? one more look at the what lineup. What time did I start? 8.35. Will our presenters for the best bread by exhibitor in show ceremony please enter the ring? So Mrs. Mr. Lord. Dennis B. Sprung, AKC President and CEO. Mr. Derek Blank, Yukonuba Senior Brand Manager. Mr. Randy Bish, Yukonuba Breeder Development Manager. What does that check say? Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand dollars to the. That's a best nice prize. Line. All right, sending the judge. The judge. No glass trophy, huh? No. Ms. Lawrence will now select the 2014 AKC Yukonuba Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show. It has been a great honor to judge Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show at this wonderful event. You breeders are the backbone of our sport. <laughs> Breeders like you have worked for generations to breed wonderful, purebred dogs to go to loving homes, and I applaud you. E Each one of you did an absolutely marvelous job representing your group. We were all so happy to have you here. And now, it is my pleasure to award Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show at the 2014 AKC Yukonuba Championship to the Bloodhound. <laughs> what a podcast, Gina, wasn't there it? There we have That's Nathan, Nathan, the Bloodhound, the number one hound in America. Is he number one hound? Number one hound. He's had a wonderful year. And he might be having a wonderful weekend here mm. in Florida. Number one in the hound group. Number one here in the best bred by exhibitor. And the chance <laughs> to make it a little bit of a triple crown this That's weekend right. if he can win best in be, show. That would be quite a feat, We've had one it? dog do that already in yeah. our history. Yeah. We had an Alaskan Malamute. I remember. Let's enjoy this wonderful dog one more time as we have our winner take a victory lap. So I think I can leave you now, Gina. Nathan's got a lot of energy. Our thanks to Andrew for stopping by one more time. Thank you, Jason. Ms. Lawrence has selected the Bloodhound as the 2014 AKC Yukonuba Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show. So Nathan's got a couple of wins. Does he have another one? We'll find out a little bit later on in Best in Show. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp, so they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. 
friend Amy works with kids with autism and developmental delays. And that's me, Sylvia. Amy got me free of charge from Canine Companions for Independence to be her assistant. Together we help improve kids' language skills, motor development, stuff like that. All they seem to want to do is laugh and give me hugs. To find out how you can help bring children with disabilities together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Now the announcement made and the Bloodhound the best in the best bred by exhibitor competition. Nathan with another win this weekend. Lindsey McCormick standing by with Nathan and his co-owner Handler. Heather, I just can't get enough of you this weekend. I'm back. <laughs> Your second win. You guys are on a roll. We are. How long have you been in this breed? About 15 years. Um, I, I was born and raised with Irish Setters and one day my mom decided to get a bloodhound and said, guess what? This is our new breed. <laughs> What makes Nathan stand out from all the other bloodhounds? Uh, his balance, his overall structure. Um, and like I said last night, he's a crowd pleaser. He likes to bow for the judges and <laughs> he's just a happy dog. He loves to do it. What's your relationship like with him? Um, well, he sleeps in bed with my husband and I, so we normally get no bed. <laughs> he gets the whole bed. He's, he's a great house dog. Um, he just, he loves going everywhere with us. He does. Well, you guys will be able to take him everywhere extremely proudly yeah. after yeah. tonight. And I can't wait to see if you guys get a third win yeah. in Best of Show. Congrats. So. Congrats again. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Jason. Lindsay, Heather, Nathan, thank you. So Nathan continues to stockpile the wins. Is there one more coming? We'll find out. But next up, that final slot, the working group trying to get to Best in Show. That's next. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My buddy Tommy is an artist, and I'm his assistant, Hailey. Actually, I've been helping Tommy with a lot of things since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence. I help him get around, reach things he can't get to, keep him smiling. Sometimes I'm even his paintbrush. To find out how you can help bring people like Tommy together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. <coughs> Here in Orlando, the action continues on the nightcapper, the end of the week of the AKC. The Yukonuba National Championship, the working group is upon us. And as we like to say, two Jasons are better than one. Jason Napp here with Gina DiNardo and Jason Taylor of Yukonuba, who's joining us. Jason, 
good to the be working, here, you guys. Yeah, the working group is here, and if we can tell anything from the rest of the competitions, this one's got a lot to live up to, but every other group so far has been great. This one, too, will be strong. I feel sure of it. The working group is a, is a great group of dogs. These are the lunch boxers. These are the blue-collar guys that uh, have always performed alongside their masters to to guard or to pull, and so I'm really excited to see it. It'll be fun to see this group round out the competition for the field and best of show with the winner. And Gina, some more of the particulars here of the working group. Well, Brett, Brett to perform jobs such as guarding property, pulling sleds. They've been invaluable assets to man throughout the ages. Great law enforcement dogs, big, strong guys. Certainly some great service dogs in that mix as well. They're waiting backstage and they're ready to go here in the working group. Now it's time for the working group. Please welcome from Sapphire, North Carolina, Mrs. Dorothy N. Collier. Our steward for the working group is AKC board member, Mr. James Dock. May we have the working group, please. Well, the Great Dane leading them out, and another stacked field of dogs here, the working group. Thirty dogs in the working group. Big, powerful, muscular dogs protecting their homes, farms, flocks. Some are used to pull long. Load, long, heavy loads. Dorothy Collier of Riviera Beach, Florida, and the judge for this working group. She's been a fancier since 1968. She started out in the Commodore breed. She's a founder and vice president of an organization we call Take the Lead which is an organization within the sport that raises money for those in need in the sport. That's one thing that you can see throughout this week of everybody kind of sharing their knowledge and their experience mm -hmm. and the camaraderie that goes along with this sport on display, not only in the ring, but throughout all the sections here at the Orange County Convention Center throughout the <coughs> week of competition. Great Dane. There is no known reason for associating Great Danes with Denmark. The breed developed in Germany over 400 years ago, probably from breeds of Tibet, England, and elsewhere. Germans used the dogs to hunt the savage wild boar. The Great Dane must be of commanding size and substance and be of even temper and depriment. This is Great Dane number 22. Splash starting us off here in this working group. When I was a little girl, this is the breed that my family first started showing. Straight down and back. They're fabulous house dogs. Very gentle and loving. Dog people like to get in fights over, is it this breed or is it that breed? There are a lot of breeds in this group where they're just immediately recognizable. Yeah. Everyone knows what a Great Dane looks like. Well, Splash gets a lot of fun from chasing the family cat, <laughs> Isis. Chasing a title here in Florida. Front feet on the spot, thank you. Alaskan Malamut. The earliest Russian sailors to arrive in the Arctic lands that became known as Alaska reported that the native people used dogs to pull sleds through the snow. 
The origin of these dogs, later known as Alaskan Malamutes, is unknown. Bred for strength and stamina, they are still at home in the harshest of climates and roughest of conditions. This is Alaskan Malamute number five. Mr. Jade on display. Jade is a Korean and Philippine champion. He is a multiple best in show winner in Korea, being shown by his owner, Annie. And he became a champion in just four days this weekend. That's impressive. Not many dogs can do that. And this is Annie's first ever American champion. Especially at the level of competition here at the national championship. This is a breed that's very athletic, very strong, bred to pull, heavy, heavy loads, <coughs> long distances. He's being a little excited. He's got lots of energy like he's supposed to. Doberman Pinscher. Developed in Germany in the late 19th century by a tax collector named Louis Doberman, who wanted a medium-sized guard dog as well as a companion, their compact, elegant, muscular bodies and alert, intelligent demeanor make them ideal for many types of work, as well as a true friend and guardian. This is Doberman Pinscher, number 54. Linda George is handling glory. See, hallelujah. Part of that name, Glory Hallelujah. Glory is the number two Doberman Pinscher in the country. She has won three best in shows to date. She won the Doberman Pinscher National Specialty this past October. She's owned by Jackie and Alan Wendt and Hillary Zimmerman. And the Wentz have been in the sport and the Dobermans for many, many years. I think I know someone else that fits that description, don't I, Gina? Me. That would be you, <laughs> yes. This is the breed I grew up showing and breeding myself with my family. So I'm going to wish her luck. <laughs> boxer. Recognizable since the 16th century, the boxer was perfected in Germany. They were used for bull baiting until it was outlawed in the mid 19th century. Their name comes from their tendency to start altercations with their front paws like a boxer. They are devoted pets and courageous guardians. This is boxer number 15. But really, he's boxer numero uno here. <laughs> uno certainly would like to be number one at the end of this working group. Who has mul mul Uno has multiple best in shows, 28 group firsts, was the People's Choice Award at the American Boxer Club this year. I've known some boxers. I've never known them to start altercations, but I have known them to want to give me hugs. Yes, they're so. very sweet and loving. Have this trademark beautiful chiseled head. I've had a boxer or two. They're great family pets. Akita. The Akita evolved in the rugged snowy mountains of Japan in the early 17th century and were used to go after wild boars and bears. At one time, ownership of this breed was limited to the imperial family. A special vocabulary was used to talk about or address this regal breed. The Japanese still regard the Akita as a national treasure. This is Akita number 23. Regal and rugged are pretty good characteristics to have. Absolutely. This is a very large and powerful breed. They're supposed to be heavy boned. They were bred to hunt large, large game. So they're fearless. They're named for the region in Japan that they came from. Thank you, go right around. They are beautiful, but they're a lot of dog, too. So a strong hand is good with them. <coughs> but with that, they can be great pets. They're great pets. They just need to know who's in charge. Yeah. Giant Schnauzer. 
The giant schnauzer was developed from the earlier standard schnauzer and evolved as a result of the need for a larger breed to drive cattle rather than sheep. Bavarian cattlemen bred the smaller version to shepherd breeds and later to Great Danes. Gaining attention in the early 1900s, their nature and size made them a popular choice for police work. This is Giant Schnauzer number 24. This is China. Last year, the mother of this dog was number two in the working dog class here a year ago. China would love to be one spot better. Giant schnauzers are used to drive cattle, livestock, but they're also guard dogs. This is a breed in the working group that does not shed. There are very few of those. These tend to be the lesser known of the schnauzers, but uh, they're, they're a nice one. They're a nice breed. If you want a larger dog, doesn't shed. Rottweiler. <laughs> As they conquered Europe, Roman armies brought food supplies with them in the form of herds that were guarded and driven by dogs that were the ancestors of the Rottweiler. When the Romans were ousted, the dogs remained in as what is now known as southern Germany. Over time, the breed developed and was used more often in police work than they were as drovers. This is Rottweiler number 15. Rico in top 10 in this Rottweiler category in 2014. These are great family pets. They were bred originally as carting dogs, pulling carts through the towns. And I know some of these working yeah, breeds uh, sometimes get a bad rap and it's undeserved. I think they're they are bred to work, and so they're willing. And they're just naturally protective of the families they love. Black Russian Terrier. In the 1930s, a Russian military kennel began interbreeding Rottweilers, Giant Schnauzers, Airedales, and Newfoundlands to create a large, powerful guard dog that would be reliable, trainable, and able to endure harsh Russian winters. First bred true in 1956, the Black Russian Terrier is expected to be well-balanced with good temperament. This is Black Russian Terrier number 17. And befitting, befitting his name, not just another rock star, Ringo <laughs> star, that little mop top like a beetle would have had during the glory days. So the Black Russian Terrier is a newer breed. It's one of our newest breeds in the world, actually. Became part of the AKC <coughs> in 2004. This is a very confident, courageous dog. I would say not for a first-time dog owner. Probably not. Uh, some experience with dogs and, and how to train them well is, is the right family for this dog. Portuguese Water Dog. Portuguese Water Dogs probably descended from the herding dogs of Central Asia. Their route to the rugged coast of Portugal is open to debate, but their use is not. Fishermen of the area use them to herd fish into their nets and retrieve lost tackle. Today the breed maintains its love of water, coupled with tireless activity. This is Portuguese Water Dog number five. Talking about rock stars before, this is a dog star, the number one ranked show dog in the U.S. this year. This is Matisse. He has earned over 229 career best in shows. He is the winningest male show dog in history, two-time national specialty winner, and last year's Best in show winner, right I here. I thought he looked familiar. Yes. There's a trophy with a bronze of him around here that we'll see a little later. It's going for the second time. <laughs> We've never had a repeat. Samoyed. The Samoyed is one of the oldest of all breeds and developed in the icy tundra of Antarctica. 
The predecessors of the Nordic breeds, they were used as guardians of reindeer and as sled dogs by native tribes. Semoyeds were the breed used in the 1911 expedition that was the first to reach the South Pole. This is Semoyed number 19. So this is Bogey. And Bogey we saw just a few minutes ago in the Best Bred by Exhibitor and Show competition. He is a multiple Best in Show and Best in Specialty Show winner the number one Sammy, as we call him, in the United States. Number three working dog right now. Go right around. Shown by Amy Green, his breeder and owner. Characteristic smile there from the Sammy in. Siberian Husky. Native to Northeastern Asia, the, Sibir the Siberian Husky was created to travel great distances at a moderate speed in low temperatures and with a minimum expenditure of energy. They were essential to the survival of the indigenous people. As these dogs gained popularity in Alaska, many stories of their stamina and strength became a part of Alaskan history. This is Siberian Husky number 31. The Siberian Husky is bred to pull lighter loads very long distances. Interesting how the breeds develop because you notice that they look the same. Breeds that do <coughs> the same job tend to look the same with minor differences. Here's an example. Siberian Husky lighter. Lighter bone, the, yep. Versus the Malamute, for example, that would be heavier boned for larger loads. Great Pyrenees. The Great Pyrenees probably developed from several ancient breeds from around the world. Once in Europe, the breed remained in isolated mountain pastures until medieval times. Used as guardians of the flock and as cart dogs in the mountains, the breed eventually became fashionable in noble circles. As pack dogs or guides, they are unsurpassed. This is Great Pyrenees number 12. Karen Justin, one of the co-owners and the handler of Splash. Multiple specialty winner. This is a very gentle, loving breed. Bred to guard flocks. There's a certain elegance about them that I just find lovely. To me, they just look pastoral, <laughs> which is appropriate. Bernice Mountain Dog. The Bernese Mountain Dog is from Switzerland and is the descendant of dogs brought to the area by the invading Roman soldiers more than 2,000 years ago. They were willing to work and be workers on farms, performing draft and shepherding duties, also acting as watchdogs, and they're known as hard workers and loyal companions. The breed flourishes in its homeland. This is Bernice Mountain Dog, Same number nine. <clears throat> so this is Clooney. In 2001, he became the first Bernese Mountain Dog to achieve both a working dog excellent and a versatility excellent from the Bernese Mountain Dog Club of America. This is a favorite breed in Yukonuba offices. Of course, we bring our dogs to work. We make dog food, so it makes sense. <laughs> you can often see several Bernese sitting in meetings with us. Are they good decision makers? Uh, they're not bad. Uh, they tend to do better with plenty of kibble. <laughs> Newfoundland. Their ancestry somewhat uncertain. The Newfoundland originated in northeastern Canada and was the result of crossbreeding involving breeds that arrived with European fishermen. With their heavy, oily coat and webbed feet, they are equally at home on icy waters as well as on land. Rescue stories abound involving the Newfoundland. This is Newfoundland number 31. Down and back, please. This is Fezzik. Okay. 
Loves diving face first into the snow to chase snowballs. It sounds like a good winter pastime. He's got the coat for it. Certainly does. Being shown tonight by his breeder owner, Ingrid Leiden. Thank you, Colorado Brown. Ingrid also won one of our regional Yukonuba Breeder Stakes competitions, and she participated in that last night. Kuvas. With origins in Tibet, the Kuvas came to Hungary via Turkey. They were companions of those favored in royal circles eight centuries ago. Held in esteem as guardians, they were the constant companions of the rulers of turbulent governments. While not as large as the early prognicators, Kubas still have an intimidating presence. This is Kubas number seven. I'll throw it down the back. So this is Bam Bam. And Kubas are livestock guardians. They're very brave. They're very determined. And owner, owner Deborah Blank told us that in 1990, she wanted a companion for hiking, and her dogs right then around. saved her life from bears <coughs> and moose. Bam Bam's grandmother won best of breed here in 2007. Bam Bam following suit here this year. Bull Mastiff. The known history of the Bull Mastiff begins around 1860 in England. Gamekeepers on large estates needed a breed that was courageous, aggressive, and fast in order to deter poachers. They crossed the Mastiff and the Bulldog and came up with exactly what they wanted. The breed maintains its impressive qualities today and remains an eager guardian. This is Bull Mastiff number five. Katie Martin, one of the co-owners handling seven here, the Bull Mastiff. Katie is a second generation professional handler. She's shown bull mastiffs her entire life. This is her fourth breed win at Yukonuba National Championship. It's very impressive. It was in the bull mastiff booth to meet the breeds. There were three children laying on top of one bull mastiff. It was adorable. <laughs> Greater Swiss Mountain Dog. Originating from the same ancient Roman breeds as the Bernice Mountain Dog, the Greater Swiss Mountain Dog actually predates all of the four related Swiss breeds and is the largest. Adaptable by nature, they were used as herding, guard, and cart dogs. They have a short coat, but it's very thick with a heavy undercoat. This is Greater Swiss Mountain Dog number 19. Scott Summer here with Gus under his control. This is the number one Swissy, top winning Greater Swiss Mountain Dog in AKC history. 15 all breed best in shows. Back to back national specialty winner. Connie Corso. Large boned and muscular, the Connie Corso creates a noble and powerful presence. One of the two native Italian mastiff type dogs. The Connie Corso is a watchdog and hunter of difficult games such as wild boar. Easily trained and affectionate to his owner, the Connie Corso is loving with children and family. This is Connie Corso number 45. That's Roo Roo. Ruru is a big fan of playing frisbee. <laughs> Learning dock diving. It's got to be fun to learn that sport. This is a newer breed for AKC, first registered in 2010. At the Connie Corso National Specialty at Yukonuba Hall a few months back. That was quite a sight. 
Hey, Ruru's High Tech, too, is his own Facebook page. <laughs> he may be getting a lot of friend requests at the end of the night. <laughs> Leon Berger. Though lion-like in looks and size, the Leon Berger is actually a calm, non-aggressive breed. Light on his feet and graceful in motion, the Leon Berger was bred as a family farm and draft dog that now excels as a multi-purpose working dog and a reliable family companion. Leon Bergers were often called the nanny dog because of their affinity with children. This is Leon Berger number nine. Look at that face on Odin. Mm -hmm. This is the number one Leonberger in the country. Won the national specialty three years in a row. Has won best of breed here at the national championship four years in a row. And Odin is also a service dog for his owner. Thank you for writing that. Can't get over the size of his feet. <laughs> Beautiful. Commodore. Undoubtedly related to ancient breeds of the Russian steppes, the Commodore has been known in Hungary for 10 centuries. This breed was primarily a guardian of the flock. Their heavy white coat made them invisible while within the flock but visible at night when watching from a distance. They must have courted, they must have a courted coat by two years of age. This is Commodore number seven. One of those dogs that when it walks in the room, you turn your neck and take an extra look. <laughs> Can't help but notice a Commodore. This is Chaucey, number one all-breed Commodore, national specialty winner. Says that he did a Miller Light beer commercial. <coughs> Chris Berg having some fun there with Chauncey as they're out gallivanting right now for Dorothy Collier. This is a very territorial breed. They were bred to protect their flock and they'll protect their family just as mightily. Anatolian Shepherd Dog. Probably more than 6,000 years old, the Anatolian Shepherd Dog is a native of Turkey and was used as the shepherd's frontline defense from predators. Loyalty, independence, and hardiness are the hallmarks of the breed. Their independence and intelligence are tremendous assets in guard work. This is Anatolian Shepherd Dog, number seven. So this breed is a very independent thinker. They were left alone on the property to guard the flock. You know, we have friends that have alpacas, and they have an Anatolian shepherd that guards them. And when you come up to the gate, you wait for an invitation in. <clears throat> Absolutely. On the property, they will be unfriendly to strangers. Off properly, they'll be fine. Tibetan Mastiff. Considered by many to be the basic stock from which most modern large working breeds have developed, the Tibetan Mastiff has been used primarily as a family and property guardian for many thousands of years. He is aloof, watchful of strangers, and highly protective of its people and property. An intelligent breed, he is extremely independent and strong-willed. Here's Tibetan Mastiff number 23. This is Judah. Number one all-breed, multiple group-winning Tibetan Mastiff. This is still a very primitive breed. It hasn't been in the AKC world very long. It is a natural oh, guard dog. and takes its job very seriously. Probably not quite as domesticated as a breed as some of the Again, others. Again, well on my list of maybe not for a first-time dog owner. Right. Mastiff. 
The Mastiff was known in the British Isles when Julius Caesar invaded in 55 BC. The breed fought beside their masters to fend off the Roman legions. Noted for their courage and strength, they were later matched against bulls, bears, lions, and human gladiators. Over the centuries, Mastiffs have continued to prove their worth as loyal guardians. This is Mastiff number five. This is Aji. Number one Mastiff in the breed, number seven working dog, a best in show winner. <coughs> Nickname Bumblebee because he was the smallest in the litter. I'd like to see how those <laughs> other ones turned out. I think everything must be relative. <laughs> <laughs> Mastiffs are wonderful. Uh, wet kissers, but wonderful. They're very gentle. They have an easygoing attitude. They're confident. They're... Their size was supposed to be intimidating, but they are very gentle and loving with their family. Standard Schnauzer. The Standard Schnauzer is the prototype for all three Schnauzers. Depicted in German paintings of the 15th century, the breed probably came about as a cross between the Black Poodle, the Gray Spitz, and wire-haired Pinchers. They were the guardians of the farm and its produce and were later used as army and police dogs. This is Standard Schnauzer number 25. So this is OG and Carol Davis Earl, one of the owners, was retired from breeding for about a decade, found a puppy from Croatia, and that's this dog, OG. <laughs> what a find. Some things are too good to pass up, I guess. Looks like it's working out well. Oscar Quiros with the handling duties. Thank you for riding around. Dog de Bador, Bordeaux. The Dog de Bordeaux is one of France's most ancient breeds. He is a powerful dog with a very muscular body. With his massive head, serious expression, stocky and athletic build, he is quite an imposing animal. He has great courage, self-assurance, and is an affectionate companion to his master. The newest member of the AKC family, the breed became eligible to compete in AKC events on July 1st of this year. This is Dog D. Bordeaux, number 14. Don't know if you did it wherever you're watching, but when they had that really tight close-up of the face, there was a little bit of a grumble and gasp from the crowd here. They enjoyed it of the beautiful well, face. This is a guard dog, and he was meant to intimidate with his head. You're supposed to have a giant head, a scowling uh, expression. I think he has that mm -hmm. for sure. Friendly dog, too, serves as a service dog at a children's <clears throat> hospital. St. Bernard. The St. Bernard is another breed whose ancestry goes back to the Romans. They are descended from the mastiff-type dogs and the Romans that the Romans bred to local dogs of the Swiss Alps. Originally, saints were short-haired, but later developed into both the smooth and the long-haired. Swiss <clears throat> monks... The, res the rescuers of travelers <coughs> were dependent upon the breed. This is St. Bernard, number 21. The St. Bernard. Very trusted, loving companion. Great family dog. Another one from, those, from this group that's easily recognizable. Yep. This is Sanji. Handled tonight by Martin Glover. You know, you haven't lived till you've heard of St. Bernard rumble down three flights of stairs. <laughs> that is rolling thunder personified. <laughs> it is. I don't want to be at the bottom. Neapolitan Mastiff. Making their first appearance at this year's national championship are Neapolitan Mastiffs. The ancient breed regained popularity in Italy in the 1940s. 
They are a heavy-boned, massive dog that was bred for use as a defender of owner and property. Neapolitan Mastiffs are characterized by loose skin over their entire body with abundant wrinkles and folds on their head and voluminous dewlap. This is Neapolitan Mastiff number five. Down and back, please. Vincent. Jennifer Bell. Working him around the ring. So this dog is supposed to have a head, unlike any other dog, has to have large sagging lips, wrinkled loose skin. Check and check. As he moves, the skin should, should roll. He's the typical blue color, but the head, it's simply astonishing. Vincent saying, I got all that. <laughs> do I have what it takes to get the nod here from Dorothy Collier? He's number two in his breed. German Pincher. The German Pincher dates back centuries when it was used as a ratter and kept as a house and farm dog. The breed's natural hunting skills give it a keen sense of prey, drive, and determination. German pinchers are of medium size, short-coated, and highly intelligent with an animated expression that conveys the impression of a tireless working dog. This is German pincher number six. And Flash rounding out the field here in the working group, the German pincher. This is an intelligent, fearless breed. They're very protective naturally. One of the newer breeds in the working group. You notice all the working dogs are shown on the floor. No table breeds in the working group. <laughs> but which one would you want to put on the table? <laughs> well, this full field here in the working group going to get spread out. And then Dorothy Callier will continue her work. Good luck picking out of this fine class. This is hard work for these judges. They have lots of big winners in there and clearly great dogs. Dog, please. Gentleman Pincher pulled out. Akita. The Akita. Giant. Portuguese. The Black Russian. Samoyed. Portuguese water dog. Sammy. Pier. Great Pyrenees. Liam Berger. Liam Berger, Connie Corso. Thank you. One at a time, please go right around. the Doberman. With a nod to the crowd on the <laughs> way. Nikita. Giant Schnauzer. Powerful Black Russian Terrier. Portuguese water dog, Matisse, number one dog in the country. Still amazing. Mm. Samad. Here comes the Great Pyrenees. To Leanne Berger. Yeah. 
And the Connie Corso. It's a great lineup. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think she's made up her mind. And again, this countdown scoring here. Fourth now Judge third, Collier will announce first. fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. For the spot. <laughs> Thank you for bringing all these beautiful working dogs. Thank you for entering them. It's been my pleasure judging them. Tonight, fourth place will go to the Samoyed. Very nice. So Bogey Thank gets you. fourth. Third place to the Connie Corso. You're welcome. Second place to the Liam Burger. <laughs> the crowd's favorite. Liam Burger would be denied. How wonderful. That leaves first place to the Portuguese water dog. I had a feeling. <laughs> well, Matisse wins here in the working group again and keeps his bid alive to become the first repeat champion here in best in show at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, trying to go back to back. He is hard to beat but there are others waiting for him in that best in show ring. <laughs> there, there's, there's six others who are going to try. <laughs> Mrs. Collier has chosen group first, the Portuguese water dog. Second, the Leon Burger. Third, the Connie Corso. Fourth, the Samoyed. Our thanks to Jason Taylor of Yukonuba for stopping by, adding his thoughts. Well, that's what they're vying for. The trophy that goes to the winner of Best in Show here at the National Championship. That competition, it's next. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable so these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf, so I'm not just her buddy, I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. pedigrees, beyond the competition, beyond the trophies. There are people who love dogs almost as much as dogs love people, who look after them the way they look after us. Because what is at the heart of the American Kennel Club is a passion and an unwavering concern for the purebred dog. If you share that passion, visit us at akc.org. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 25% off fall and winter apparel, plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. 
Well, plenty of work for the Portuguese water dog Matisse, and he knows how to get work done. In position to repeat and best in show after winning the working group for the second year in a row. That trophy awaits the winner coming up a little bit later on, but right now Matisse and Michael Scott standing by to talk with Lindsay McCormick. What an exciting night, ending the year number one all breeds. What is his overall record? Matisse is fortunate enough to have won 229 best in shows in his career so far, <clears throat> and that's in two years. Wow, that's impressive. What is the purpose of a Portuguese water dog? They help fishermen in Portugal years and years ago, help by retrieving and doing other things with the fishermen. Well, do you ever see any of those qualities in him? Actually, he loves to swim. They, most Portuguese do love to be in the water. And what quality do you think that he possesses that'll help him stand out from all the competition tonight in Best of Show? Well, it's a really tough Best in Show lineup. All the dogs are beautiful. Matisse has all the qualities for his breed, plus he has a lot of charisma. So hopefully he'll catch his eye. Well, best of luck to you too. Jason, we're getting closer and closer to the big event. Back to you. Lindsay, the countdown continues here as we get ready for Best of Show coming up. But again, that hardware there that goes to the winner. Once again, the final results in the working group. Again, it's Matisse, the Portuguese water dog, taking first. Odin, Leonberger, there in second. Ruru there in third. And Bogey, the Sammy, there in fourth in the working group. So the field of seven is set. The action will continue here at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Plenty more to come. Unlike most superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Riding the trails of the Alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my friend, Cole. And that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Now entering the ring is Congressman Ted S. Yoho and AKC Director of Government Relations, Sheila Gulf. The American Kennel Club is pleased to present Congressman Ted Yoho with the AKC's Legislature of the Year Award for Florida. Congressman Yoho practiced veterinary medicine in Florida for more than 25 years before being elected to the United States House of Representatives in 2012. Dr. Yoho's experience as a veterinarian and his commitment to animal welfare and responsible pet ownership have made him one of Congress's leading advocates on canine issues. Representative Yoho was instrumental in assisting the AKC to secure language in the 2014 Farm Bill 
that requires the United States Department of Agriculture to clarify crucial definition in the Animal Welfare Act. We are pleased to honor Congressman Yoho and his informed and responsible voice on behalf of dogs and dog owners throughout the United States. Congratulations to Congressman Yoho. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp, so they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My friend Amy works with kids with autism and developmental delays. And that's me, Sylvia. Amy got me free of charge from Canine Companions for Independence to be her assistant. Together we help improve kids' language skills, motor development, stuff like that. All they seem to want to do is laugh and give me hugs. To find out how you can help bring children with disabilities together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 25% off fall and winter apparel, plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please turn your attention to the floor for a very special presentation. The American Kennel Club Breeder of the Year Award was created to honor those who have dedicated their lives to improving the health, temperament, and quality of purebred dogs through their commitment, passion, and integrity. This evening, the American Kennel Club is proud to present its 12th annual Breeder of the Year Award. On the floor, AKC Chairman Alan Coulter and AKC President and CEO Dennis Sprung will make the presentations to the seven group recipients. At the conclusion of this presentation, one of the seven group recipients will be named the American Kennel Club's 2014 Breeder of the Year. Valerie Nunes Atkinson and Yvonne Hassler Detarding, VJK MYST, German Short Haired Pointers. VGK, VJK MYST dogs have earned everything from number one in the breed, best in show and group wins, to national specialty wins, best in specialties, and national sweepstakes and futurity wins in both the United States and abroad. They have also produced dogs that have titled in field trials, hunt tests, obedience, and agility. Valerie and Yvonne are proud that each generation of VJK MYST German short-haired pointers improves the breed and produces happy, healthy, well-adjusted family companions that can succeed in the show ring and still go out and do what they were originally intended to do. Hound Group, Janine Sudinsky and Michelle Sudinsky-Stahl, Lucene Dachshunds. Janine has bred, owned, and handled Dachshunds for 64 years and is an AKC judge. Her love of dogs was passed on to her daughter, 
Michelle, who started training and handling Lucene Dotsons in 1974 and has continued to show them for 40 years. Many of today's top winning Dotsons have the Lucene Kennel name somewhere in their pedigree. Together, this mother-daughter team has produced 300 champions that have won major awards at many of the most important events in dogdom, including the Dachshund Club of America National Specialty and the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Working group, Gwen DeMilta and Carissa DeMilta Champino, Alisation Doberman Pinchers. <laughs> this mother-daughter AKC Breeders of Merit team proudly continue the Elicitan breeding program started by Gwen's mother, Joanne, over 40 years ago. To date, 166 champions carry the Elicitan name. Elicitan has bred numerous generations of Register of Merit dogs that have launched many breeding programs and are behind some of, the of today's top producers. Elicitan Dobermans have won all breed and specialty bests in show. Doberman Pitcher Club of America National Specialties. Top 20 in confirmation and obedience. Numerous Doberman Pincher Club of America winners, dog and winners bitch awards, grand prize futurities, and Westminster Kennel Club Group First. Terrier Group, Matt Stander and Eugene Zephyrus, Craigsmore Sky Terriers. Matt and Eugene's enchantment with a Sky Terrier developed out of a long-standing friendship with the late Walter Goodman. In 1972, they purchased their first Sky from Walter and his mother, Adelaide. Since then, dogs in the Craigsmore breeding program have included the top-winning Sky Terrier in breed history, the 2011 and 2014 Show Dog of the Year, and the first terrier of any breed to win the terrier group at both the World Dog Show and the Westminster Kennel Club Show. Greg's Moore Dogs have won 97 all-breed bests in show to date and over 400 terrier group firsts. Toy Group, Kathleen Colbert, Terry Ann Yorkshire Terriers. Since Kathleen was born and raised in a family dedicated to the dog fancy, no one was surprised when her love affair with the Yorkshire Terrier began in 1963. Her first companion champion started out in matches and puppy classes before going on to win best of breed at the Yorkshire Terrier Club of America National Specialty. Over the years, her Turian line has produced more than 225 champions, including two world champions and several international champions, Register of Merit sires, and numerous obedience and agility titles have also come from the ranks of the Turian Yorkshire Terriers. Non-sporting group, Rod and Patty Strand, Merry-Go-Round Dalmatians. Merry-Go-Round Dalmatians is known for producing long-lived dogs with excellent temperaments, good movement, and spectacular beauty. Rod and Patty have bred, owned, and shown numerous top producing sires, as well as dams. More than 150 champions, many top 10 winners, and best in show dogs, including the top winning Dalmatian in breed history. For 45 years, they have served the sport as breeders, judges, and AKC delegates. Patty served on the AKC board for 16 years. One of their greatest rewards is working with people who have dogs from their line, some for as long as 40 years and four generations.
Herding Group, Jim Buzzard, Buzzard Australian Cattle Dogs. Jim's passion for his breed began as a young ranch hand in the early 1960s. He quickly learned that the better the dog, the more work they can do, and the longer they will be around to do it. Still an active cattle rancher, Jim's passion for the correct Australian cattle dog continues to this day. Jim hosted the first AKC herding trial, and one of his dogs earned the very first herding excellent title. Buzzard Australian cattle dogs have produced close to 400 champions, proving their excellence by winning in confirmation and performance events throughout the world. Mr. Coulter and Mr. Sprung will present the 2014 Breeder of the Year Trophy. And now, the recipient of the American Kennel Club's 12th Breeder of the Year Award is... From the working group, Gwen Demita and Carissa Demelta Champino. <laughs> Alyssaton Doberman Pinchers. A painting will be commissioned to commemorate a prominent dog from the recipient's kennel. A perpetual trophy will be inscribed with the name of the recipient and will be on display in the AKC headquarters in New York City. Congratulations to all of our participants. So, Gina, a great honor there for those women honored here as Breeders of the Year. Congratulations to Gwen and Rissa on a well-deserved Breeder of the Year award. Well, all the other awards have been handed out. I think there may only be one thing left to decide. And that's Best in Show. It's coming up next. Stay tuned. The seven best get to decide the top winner tonight. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf. So I'm not just her buddy, I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. AKC Yukonuba National Championship brought to you in part by Bouncy, the quicker picker upper.
been a terrific weekend plus of competition here in Orlando, Florida. And it's time to crown the ultimate champion here, best in show, the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. What a weekend. Jason Knapp here with Gina DiNardo. Well, we've got seven worthy contenders here. Boy, if you thought the group judging was difficult, <laughs> this is going to be a doozy, too. We have an insane lineup. We have the top dogs in the country here competing for the title of national champion, and I cannot remember a stronger lineup ever. And we also have the chance for a repeat winner. Never happened before. Matisse, the Portuguese water dog, has the opportunity to win best in show for the second year in a row. Let's take you back to the toy group last night, Rocket the Shih Tzu. We also saw uh, that dog in another competition, Nathan, Nathan the, Bloodhound. the Bloodhound as well, been active tonight. Number one on the hound, hound dog, group. also won best bred by exhibitor just a little time ago. Now we have the standard poodle. That's Ricky, winner of Cruft's Dog Show, the largest dog show in the world. And the field spaniel Gideon was also a victor last night. Number one field spaniel, all-time top winning spaniel. And then the winners tonight in the group categories, Old English Sheepdog Swagger there. Number two all breed, number one herding dog. And we have the number five all breed Sky Terrier, Charlie. Charlie will be in the mix. And we have the number one dog in the country, Portuguese water dog, Matisse, who is trying to win two times in a row. Well, the field of seven is set. But before we start to what it's like to decide best in show, our Lindsay McCormick has the chance and had the chance to talk with the ultimate decision maker of Best in Show tonight. This is Ron Miniker, this year's Best in Show judge. Ron, this is probably a full circle moment for you. Once standing here to make sure this competition even happened and now the Best of Show judge. What was your journey like? It's been a long, wonderful journey. I had an opportunity to work with a lot of great people, see a wonderful group of dogs, and see something as wonderful as this show turn in from a concept into an incredible event. How much added pressure is it for you this evening watching and knowing that you have to pick that final dog? Very extreme. Mm -hmm. When you get a group of over 4,100 dogs, all wonderful specimens, all competing for the best in show, all having strengths, some having some weaknesses. It becomes a very daunting task to try to select one or two out of the number, out of 4,100. How difficult is it to compare one of the dogs to another dog in the best of show competition? It's not as difficult as it may seem because you're comparing two different dogs with two different sets of standards each one very different. It's not comparing one breed to the other breed at all. It's comparing each breed to the written standard for that breed. So that's very different than trying to compare the two. Other than comparing the dogs to the standard, is there another quality that you look for when they're taking their final lap around? Absolutely. You look for enthusiasm, you look for reach, you look for drive. You look for attitude and that special sparkle in the eye that says, hey, I'm here tonight and I want to be the winner. So when you enter the best of show arena this evening and you see those seven dogs, what are you hoping that you see? I know what I'm going to see. I'm going to see the magnificent seven. Thank you so much, Ron. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Fitting words. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, for best in show. Seven group winners, America's largest dog show, and for one winner, the richest prize in the sport of dogs, $50,000. Accompanying our judge is Mr. Alan Coulter, AKC Chairman of the Board. Please welcome from Jupiter, Florida, our judge, the one and only, Mr. Ronald H. Menneker. 
Our stewards for Best in Show are Mr. Dennis B. Sprung, AKC President and CEO, Mr. Doug Lundgren, AKC Vice President, Congressman Ted S. Yoho, and Mr. Jason Taylor, Communications Director for Yukonuba. From the working dog group, the Portuguese water dog, number five, judged by Mrs. Dorothy N. Collier. From the hound group, the bloodhound, number 25, judged by Mr. Michael J. Doherty. From the non-sporting group, the standard poodle, number 15, judged by Mrs. Elaine J. Lessig. From the sporting group, the Field Spaniel, number five, judged by Mr. Ed Embry Bibbon. From the herding group, the English Sheepdog, number 21, judged by Mrs. Roberta C. Davies. From the Terrier Group, the Sky Terrier, number nine, judged by Mrs. Karen C. Wilson. From the Toy Group, the Shih Tzu, number five, judged by Dr. Margaret A. Reed. Ronald Menneker, Jupiter, Florida. Terrific. Congratulations. You've done great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Bye. Offering his... Once around, please. I'm back in line. Congratulations, and then initial instructions to get this... All together, please. Group of seven in motion. Here we go. Interesting to hear his thoughts chatting with Lindsay about what he's looking for tonight. When you come down to seven great dogs that conform so closely to their standard, there's got to be something that breaks the ties, and it's got to be enthusiasm, energy, something that just gives you goosebumps. So here is the dog that has the chance to make history, trying to be the defending champ, Matisse, number okay, one so show dog at American back. 2014, Michael Scott Handling. He has 229 career best in shows. And the chance to keep his figure on top of the trophy, the reigning champion is atop the trophy with the shape of their style of dog. And Matisse would remain in that top spot.
This is Nathan the Bloodhound, number one hound in the country, Heather Helmer, one of the co-owners and the handler. And one of the breeders. The triple crown of ownership. Take him right down and back. So Nathan, remember, already winning his group and winning another competition. Best bred by exhibitor in show. Chance to pull off the triple here. Earlier this year, he won the Hound Group at Westminster. He won Best in Show at the National Dog Show. Best bred by exhibitor here. There's Nathan, the bloodhound, hoping to smell the route to victory. From the non-sporting group, we have the standard poodle. This is Ricky. Has had an illustrious career. His first time to the United States, he went best of winners at the Poodle Club of America. Then he was top dog all breeds in the UK in 2013. He won the Yukonuba World Challenge here in Orlando last year. And in March, won Crufts Best in Show, beating 21,000 other dogs. So the well-traveled Ricky looking to add another title to his resume. I said it earlier, and I really mean it. I have not seen a stronger, deeper lineup of dogs in Best in Show here ever. Great expression there from Ricky going by. Now the field spaniel, Gideon. Representing the sporting group, we have Gideon. Currently the number two sporting dog. He is the top field spaniel in history. 23 best in shows, 92 group firsts. Elizabeth Jordan Nelson handling. Again, the ownership group talking about this as we touched on last night. This is the once in the lifetime dog you get. <laughs> it is. You dream of having a dog that's this successful. Pretty good form there for the judge. Did just what he was supposed to do. Like he's done it a few times <laughs> before. Just a few. Good old swagger. Look at that old English sheepdog. Representing the herding group. Swagger is the number two dog in the country, right behind Matisse. He has 112 best in shows. So we have two dogs in this lineup that have won over 100 best in shows each. He is the top winning Old English, his Old English Sheepdog in history. Dog does look picture perfect, huh? Apropos name, again, goes by Swagger. Shown by his okay. breeder, owner, and handler, Colton Johnson. 
Last year, he was awarded Best Bred by <laughs> Exhibitor with Swagger at the AKC Youth Liga National Championship. And he talked about in his interview after winning the group with Lindsay, that amble. That's right, that rolling gait across his back. We call it the loin. And he does it perfectly. This dog lives with Colton and his wife and their three children. He says Swagger likes to herd Colton's three children. <laughs> so he's got duties on the home front <laughs> there. Right. One more look at Swagger. Time for the Sky Terrier, Charlie. Charlie is the number one terrier in the country, the number four all breed dog. He has 43 best in shows. He is the number one Sky Terrier of all time. He is co owned by our Terrier Group Breeder of the Year award winners that we saw just a few Kay. minutes ago. Larry Cornelius after. Winning the group earlier tonight, telling Lindsay McCormick about two and a half hours to bathe and dry Charlie to get him in the process of getting ready to come out here to the ring. It takes hours to get these show dogs ready for the big ring. It's passion, dedication. Charlie He's hopes Charlie. to be in charge. Yeah, he here at does, the end. Yes. And last but not least, time for Rocket the Shih Tzu. Rocket's representing the toy group this evening. He is the number one Shih Tzu All Systems, the number three toy dog, number 12 All Breeds. He has 16 All Breed Best in Shows, 80 Group Firsts. Yes, So one final glance there at Rocket from Ronald Menneker. However do you choose between seven great dogs? There's the defending champ. Okay, so once around, please. One at a time. So one more go around. First for last year's champion, hoping to repeat Matisse, the Portuguese water dog. An ovation for Nathan, the bloodhound. Ricky, the standard poodle, hoping for another big title. The Field Spaniel, Gideon. Swagger, going to sashay his way one more time around. The Old English Sheepdog. Charlie the Sky Terrier. Number one terrier this year looking to continue his run of success. And the Shih Tzu Rocket rounding out the field. Again, 17 of the top 20 dogs in all breeds in America here this weekend.
and one of these seven will be the best in show. Crowd trying to pick its winner vocally. like the decision's been made. Trophy being wheeled into position. Signing the book and waiting for the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us in the ring are Mr. Alan Coulter, AKC Chairman of the Board, Mr. Dennis Sprung, AKC President and CEO, Mr. Doug Lundgren, AKC Vice President Sports and Events, Congressman Ted S. Yoho, Mr. Jason Taylor, Yukonuba Communications Director and Assistant Show Chairman, Mr. Derek Blank, Yukonuba Senior Brand Manager, and Ms. Victoria Seiler, Yukonuba Breeder Communications Manager. Thank you all for presenting this magnificent group of seven dogs. And every one of you worthy here of being, of winning the AKC Yukonuba 2014 Championship. The lineup is terrific. I salute all of you from the bottom of my heart. Tonight, my reserve is the Portuguese water dog. You. We walk. Thank you. There we go. The rest of you, I'm taking home, but particularly the Sky Terrier. The Sky Terrier takes the title. Charlie is in charge, the winner here in Orlando. Matisse, the Portuguese water dog, denied that repeat. And the Sky Terrier, well, the sky's the limit tonight. Charlie is the champion. And the Terrier takes the top spot right in here there. at the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Where am I going? Congratulations to the Sky Terrier, our new AKC Yukonuba National Champion. Well, Gina DiNardo is down in the ring, standing by with our winners. Gina? Larry. Larry, congratulations. You have an absolutely beautiful Sky Terrier. What does this win mean to you? Uh I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I'm thrilled, and I'm so proud of him. I, I couldn't be more proud of him. Mr. Menneker, you had seven outstanding dogs to choose from. What was it that made this Sky Terrier the winner? Well, he's every bit of Sky Terrier. He has the most magnificent head. His bone structure is absolutely superb. His proportions are great. As you can see, he moves at a wonderful pace and he truly is a wonderful representative of that breed. And now our friends from Yukonuba have a few things to say. Well, Larry, on behalf of Yukonuba, we congratulate you for becoming the new 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Champion. And so I'll present you with the Celebration of Champions Trophy, 
where next year a likeness of your Sky Terrier will join our great champions of the past. Of course, a supply of Yukonuba dog food and $50,000. Congratulations. How about a lap of honor for our best in show winner? Well, Charlie came in as the number four dog all breed in the country into this AKC Yukonuba National Championship. And right now he is number one here this weekend, a national champion. And his likeness will be atop that trophy when we return for the national championship in 2015. But a great weekend of competition here in Orlando. Hope you enjoyed it following along here with our coverage for public address announcer Jeff Michaels, Lindsay McCormick, and Gina DiNardo, and our entire crew, this is Jason Neff. Hope you enjoyed watching the great passion and action of this national championship, the AKC Yukonuba National Championship here from Orlando, Florida. So long. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. We'll be back right here in Orlando on December 12th and 13th, 2015. Good night.